photograph should be taken with that magnificent trophy. Thank you. Okay, deep breath now. Remember your technique. Oh, it's enough to make the hairs on the back of your neck stand to attention. Of course, for 17 days, starting 10 o'clock Saturday morning, all eyes will be on the crucible. But right now, it's about the English Institute of Sport. And it's a good evening once again to Ken Doherty. Ken, tonight, the dream of walking down those stairs at the Crucible will become a reality for eight of our 16 players taking part in Judgment Day Part 1. And boy, oh boy, seven of the eight couldn't be closer. We're in for a brilliant night. Well, I don't think I've ever witnessed one year where we've had so many close matches. I mean, you mentioned seven of the eight of the eight matches are only a frame apart. It's quite incredible. The only the other one, of course, is 6-3, Jack Lizowski, which was a great match as well and could have easily ended 5-4. Yeah, but it's so close all the way through and not much between them. There's a lot of matches could go right to the wire tonight, you know that? Yes, it could be a late one. Put the kettle on. Make sure the teapot's <laughs> large. Full packet of full fat biscuits because we are going nowhere. We'll be here to interview every single winner. Mm -hmm. And Ken, just before we have a quick recap on the eight matches yeah. uh, thus far from this afternoon, we've got some potential hand grenade opponents for the top 16 mm. in that draw. Yeah. Thursday morning live, five live, also being streamed on the BBC Sport website. We've got some monumental first round matches coming, haven't we? Yeah, we've got a lot of, uh, we've got an eclectic mix, haven't we, of experience and, of course, some new young bloods that could be making a debut at the Crucible as well, which would be, uh, you know, it's, it's just amazing. And it's the dream of walking down those stairs, as you said. People, you know, since we've sort of turned professional, all those players out there have dreamt of it. Now, some have witnessed it and some have won the tournament, of course. You've got Bingham and Neil Robertson there, past winners. Uh, but some trying to make it for the very first time. And that's a very special dream come true. So there's so much at stake, both for the experienced players, both for the a little bit inexperienced players. So much at stake for them all. There is, and we've got six potential debutants now. Where were you this afternoon if you missed the action? Here is a very brief recap as to how we ended up so close. Ken Doherty touched on it. Jack Lazowski against Matthew Stevens. Top quality from both players. Traded centuries at the beginning of the match. Then we had a couple of tight ones that went down to the black. This, in theory, Ken, could have gone 5-4. It yeah. looks one-sided, Lazowski 6-3, but Stevens a little bit unlucky with that last red down the rail. Yeah, exactly. I think the both players have played really well. It's a high-quality match, as you said. A couple of centuries to start us off. Then two black ball games, finished at 2-2 at the interval. But, um, yeah, Lazowski sort of just went into the sort of distance a little bit with the, with a three-frame lead. We just got a quick glimpse there of Wakelin uh, against Robbie Williams. Robbie Williams doing well. So too is Jack Jones. Who could forget that incredible run to the quarters last year? And speaking of incredible runs, what about Jensen Kendrick? He's won three matches already. He was shaking his head there, but he's just about in control against Liu Heo Chan. What a story it would be if he could save his tour status. Remember, if you win four matches, you're guaranteed a place on tour, even if you don't climb into the 64. Maguire bidding for his 20th appearance at the Crucible. He missed out last year and was absolutely devastated. Recovered well from 2-0 and 3-1 down this afternoon, shaking his head, but he has the slender advantage. Stuart Bingham dug himself out of a monumental hole, 7-3 down against Carrington in his first round at the English Institute. But what a tight match it is against Louis Heathcote. What a story it would be for him if he could beat the 2015 champion and put his name in the draw. But Bingham definitely still in the shake-up, beginning to rediscover something like his best form. Ricky Walden, 11 years since he made the semis back in 13. He's in action against the battler from Hastings, Mark Davis. Davis, remember, was relegated from the tour uh, last year when he lost to Joe Perry, but 
he managed to save his status when matters off the table meant he was still good to go. And Dominic Dale, five frames away from his first appearance at the Crucible in 10 years. What a story that would be. Yeah, the spaceman, great experience, great character. Uh, eccentric, uh, but still a brilliant snooker player and uh, a wonderful snooker brain as well. It's uh, yeah, evenly, pretty evenly matched as well. But yeah, some great matches in store and uh, some tight finishes in store as well. I think. I hope, I hope we get some ten nines. We've had mm -hmm. six so far over the eight thrilling days of qualifying, but now comes the big moment. And when it comes to a big moment, you need a big man with a microphone in his hand. We've got the big dog, Dave Hendon, <laughs> ready to rock and roll. The most prolific commentator in the business. Pride of ITV, pride of Eurosport, and tonight, pride of the World Snooker Tour. Mm -hmm. He had five Weetabix for breakfast. <laughs> He's ready to go to midnight if that's what's required. Mm -hmm. Evening, Hendo. Over to you. Good evening, Rob. You've gone big early there. It could be a long night, as you say, and we're looking forward to following it. We're going to just go through all the tables for you just to show you how these sessions are starting. They're all set up perfectly. Of course, Matthew Stevens could do with uh, a quick start against Jack Lazowski. It's the old cliche, winning the mini session and all that, getting it close. But, of course, he's such a experienced player over the longer distance that they've been in this position before. It's been a closely fought match. He's played well. He started with a 1-3-5 in frame one, but clearly needs a bit more of that here this evening. So that's table one. We'll just take you through it through each table, just showing you how we're starting off. Robbie Williams, 5-4 upon Chris Wakelin, won the last frame. In fact, it was the last frame of all the tables to finish. That was just a couple of hours ago. I'm sure the players have just got out of the, the venue for a little bit and uh, just sort of gone back into the real world, as it were, for a while before a big, big night here. Robbie Williams hasn't played at the Crucible since 2016. He's first in there. Jack Jones, of course, was there last year on his debut, reached the quarterfinals. Joey Long hasn't been there for five years. Jack Jones, 4-2 down, made three big breaks in a row to just hold the edge 5-4 as they resume. Be interesting to see if anyone can pull away or are all, the, are all these matches going to be nip and tuck? I think there'll be a mixture of the, of the two. Jensen Kendrick, biggest night of his snooker life coming up. He started in the first qualifying round. He was on the very first session on that Monday morning against Bayou Lu. Here he is. Final round, five frames from the Crucible against Lou Heishen. Big, big night, of course, for both, but particularly for Jensen Kendrick. What a moment that would be. Of course, he would keep his tour card as well if he qualified. Now, Yuancy Jun also looking to make his debut at the Crucible. He's 5-4 down to Steve Maguire. Another quite nervy last frame, actually, that Maguire won. Yes. Steve Maguire. The imposing figure of Jan Verhaas looking after that one. Table six, Louis Heathcote, another potential debutant against Stuart Bingham, of course, champion nine years ago, 2015. And uh, Stuart Bingham just staying in touch, 5-4, but again, <laughs> it's very, very closely fought. Two more to just show you briefly. Mark Davis holds the record for most qualifications, 11. He can extend that, obviously, tonight. He's 42 in front here, 5-4 up on Ricky Walden. Ricky, of course, uh, the first opponent last year at the Crucible for Luke Purcell took him actually to a decider. Could have been a different story there. But that one, I'd be amazed if either one of these pulled away. That's going to be close, surely, all night. And uh, the final match uh, features Dominic Dale and her Guo Chang. And that's 5-4 to Dominic. Experience at the moment, just shading youth, but we'll see. Because this young man, the man in the glove, is very dangerous. So that's how it all looks. I think we go back to table one, shall we, and start our coverage there. And Ken, I know he's looking forward to the evening ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, we just saw a miss there from Matthew Stevens. He'd be so disappointed. A chance there to close the 6 4. Miss Black off the spot. Yeah, this is a session, obviously, where oh. these sort of misses are going to be significant, particularly against a, a scorer like Lazowski. You know, within about 20 minutes, he could be, you know, 8 3 up. Exactly. He scores so quickly. And once he gets that little bit of daylight, which he has already, but if he sees Machu missing, blacks off the spot like that, well, that's only going to give him a little bit more confidence. Look at that. That was a lovely little touch of a shot just off the red, a little glancing blow just to steer the cue ball up towards blue and pink. Now a chance to get down for this red and then get this black on the spot as soon as possible. Could have fit that a little bit harder. Six. 
two very popular players here. Mm. I mean, Matthew, yeah. you know, for a long time has been a, a fan favourite, and obviously Jack's become that in recent years. Yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. It's just the way they, they play the game. You know, they seven very fluent, good characters, and nice uh, break builders as well. The top red, the red is just on the pink spot. That will pot into the corner. There you see it. And that will release the red just to the right of it. So it's a decent chance here. Okay, there's one safe red. 30. Well, a chance to just land an early blow here. 31. So a quick glance at the score. Tell us it'll be 17 points in the lead when this black is dispatched. And with two reds and high value colours means he's still gonna need that safish red on the left hand side cushion. So that may be Matthew Stevens only saving grace. It's not gonna be easy to get at. play on on this penultimate red the ideal color would be yellow because it's straightforward to knock out that red off the side cushion but let's he might try and elect for for pink as yeah he's, he's sort of aiming like he's, he's going to play for yellow yellow is the straightforward shot Oh, he's gone too hard. 55. He's gone too far. Too much side. Mm. It's a big mistake. We may just take the four points of the brown and play a safety shot here. Has he got an angle on the brown? When potting it into the middle to dislodge the red, wow. Almost. Good attempt. So that red is going to prove the pivotal ball. You see the brown play it again. Didn't get a full contact on the red. Now what does he do? Jack Lizowski, 59. Yeah, he was sort of staring at that red and just making sure it was going to land on the cushion. And he's holding all the, the aces in this frame, just needing the red, of course. Stevens knows he can't afford to leave it on. Yeah. 
good shot from Matthew Stevens. Well, he only had a bit of the red, but that bit was knocking the red towards this right corner pocket. When this red is cuttable. to bounce one well this frame in a way sums up not only this match but all of them it's, it's close there's been chances on both sides Matthew Stevens with another one trying to get close to the yellow here I can tell you Stuart Bingham's going to win the first frame to level at five all with Louis Heathcote and also Eight. Lou Hyacin is going to be five each with Jensen Kendrick. He doesn't like using the rest, Matthew Stevens. And he doesn't mind putting the extension on and well, as you see, he's going to throw a lot of Q out. Maybe too much, too much of a stretch. So you might have to use the rest. No, he's going to play it left-handed. Wow. Big shot. Yellow. Try and get either close or not knock the green into a potable position. What a shot. Oh, that's a great shot. That's a wonderful shot left-handed. And he might have to play this left-handed as well. And if this goes in, it'll be perfect on the brown. Wow, what a chance from nothing. Oh, you know, I was talking earlier and we mentioned it about that time he played left-handed in the final at the World Championship against Sean Murphy, Mr. Blue, and from then on, Murphy ran away with the World Championship. And could that be the beginning of the end of Matthew Stevens? What a chance to steal the frame. And now, well, he's going to go 7-3 behind. Seven. Twelve. Very interesting Jack start. Get used to it. It's going to be a dramatic night. Jack Lazowski, though, extends his lead to 7 3. Three away from the Crucible. Now, this is. Uh, the first frame on table four, Lou Hai-Shan and Jensen Kendrick. Kendrick, of course, looking to book his debut at the Crucible at uh, 104 in the rankings, 5-4 up, but a century from Lou Hai-Shan in the first frame of the night. So a very confident start from him. He's looking to book a fourth appearance at the Crucible Theatre. Nice start. Lovely shot to uh, complete the century. Now, this is live to table two. Chris Wakelin with a chance to level up with Robbie Williams. 12 in front here on the black to follow the last red. He didn't have a great angle, did he, to get on the red, so it's going to be a safety. 19 in front. Yuancy Jones won the first against Steve Maguire. Dominic Dale the first against her Guo Chang. Yeah, 89 from Yuancy Jun, so five each with Maguire. Well, he obviously felt it was cuttable. Well, that's a very strange shot from Chris Wakelin there. I mean, it's so dangerous playing that shot. Look at the cue ball. 
not guaranteed to be to be on a colour. And now he's handed a well a great opportunity for Robbie Williams here. I mean, if he knocked that red around the table, left the cue ball behind the black, he could have got a snooker. Play this pretty well. Now, what sort of an angle? Yeah, watch the top spin as it hits the red and the cushion. You'll see it sort of just arc there, killing the pace of the cue ball. Now, has he got an angle to screw the pink in off the side cushion just before the middle pocket and get it close to this yellow for the yellow pocket? Oh, is he overscrewed it? Has he overscrewed it? Wow. Seven. Well, he's certainly got plenty of cue power. Not lacking in that part of the game. Look at this. Oh, what a mistake and what a chance missed. Well, is it cuttable? Maybe still cuttable, you know. Oh, very difficult. He's got away with it, but Probably very difficult seven. shot. This was the last match to finish. It wasn't a long drawn out session by any means. I'd be surprised looking at the, the positions in, on the eight tables if we didn't get some 10 eights, maybe some 10 nines later. Do, of course, uh, contact us on X, Twitter, whatever you want to call it. At Dave Hendon, at Rob Walker TV, at Ken Doherty, 19, at Ken Doherty 97, and uh, at WST. Yeah, it's at Ken Doherty 1997. Let's get it right, otherwise someone else will get all the tweets. <laughs> Probably won't want them. is close it's not in but it's left it on but look at knock the green safe Brian McGovern says evening uh, Dave Hennon Ken Doherty enjoying the action as I travel along the M50 in Dublin on the bus home <laughs> people from all over the world watching in the laptops and the phones from as far as New Zealand to South Africa to South Carolina. Yeah, and we had Cleethorpes as well earlier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gosford. Yeah. Well, while we watch this, it's a little bit of a battle here, but uh, we want to keep you across as much action as possible. So this is Table 7, Mark Davis and Ricky Walden. Davis 5-4 up. This time last year, of course, he had to beat Joe Perry to stay on tour. So he thought he lost 10-9 on the black. Looked like his career was over. More places were opened up. And uh, he's safe for the tour this season. So Mark Davis targeting the crucible and making a very confident start to this evening's match 6-4. As I say, it'd be interesting to see if any of these players can just start to pull away as we go back live to table two. Nice green. Go near the pocket. Robbie Williams may be tempted here. Yeah. He's got a chance here. And he pot the green, maybe off three cushions for the brown into the right corner pocket. No. Chance missed. Has he got cover on the blue? I don't think so. He's left it. And that was a poor shot. Robbie Williams expect him to have gotten that. So Wakelin needs green and brown to level up at five each. Chris Wakelin, 20 in the world, been in the final of the Northern Ireland Open this season, of course, former shootout winner, and uh, three appearances at the Crucible, but he did miss out last year.
Oh, and he's missed out there on that green. So a bit of a nervy start here. Yeah, just like that red that he missed. I mean, look at the cue ball. It's nowhere near the brown. Well, we want to obviously keep us uh, across as many matches as possible. So this frame, a little way to run, but maybe we can uh, have a look at table three. Just show you this position. Jack Jones, five foot up on Joe Yulong. It was 4-2 to Joe. Jack Jones put together three big breaks in a row. Very impressive, as he was here last year. Beat the Hawk, went to the Crucible on his debut. Not really fancied, beat Carter, beat Robertson, ran Mark Allen close in the quarterfinals. <coughs> and Joe Yulong, very highly rated by everybody, but has, hasn't actually played at the Crucible for five years. In fact, he's only played there twice. Yeah. This red is close. Hello. Well, you need a little bit of luck, don't you? And he's got some. And look at the kiss on the yellow for the brown as well. I mean, Zhao Yulong was getting out of his chair, but he saw the direct line of that red, sat back down very promptly indeed. Yeah, no matter how good you are, I always say it, no matter how good or talented you are at any sport, not only at our own, but you could always deal with a little bit of luck and make such a difference. Sometimes you get enough bad luck. Whoa. That's no good. Yeah, so that frame uh, still a bit of working out to do. There's a lot of interest tonight in Jensen Kendrick, I think, who, of course, uh, is the world of 104. He's had a difficult two years on tour. Looks certain to drop off. If he qualifies for the Crucible, he'll get a fresh card. So, obviously, to play there, brilliant, but that would be a massive bonus as well for him here he is five each he's lost the first frame of the night but in front in the next what a story yeah a lovely story so far fairy tale stuff oh but that's a bit of a nightmare He's not on the pink. OK, well, th he's gone wrong there, so we'll be back with this one in due course. But back to table two. We're watching this a moment ago. This is the position now. Seven in it, because Wakelin had the chance at the green, didn't pot it. Robbie Williams has potted green and brown. So he's seven behind on this blue. which he powers in. What a terrific shot that is from Robbie Williams. If anything, just just slightly overdid it. Very well struck, though. But now, of course, he still needs pink and black. Well, he's given himself every chance. As I say, Wakelin had the green, just needing the brown as well. Been so many close frames today. This is another one. Robbie Williams needs the black for a 6-4 lead. And in it goes. Terrific. Three pots in a row there. So 6-4 it is to Robbie Williams. Let's go to table six. Louis Heathcote, another potential debutant. Five each with Stuart Bingham. This is such big nights for, for these guys, isn't it? As I was saying earlier, you know, they play... Obviously, a lot of events have qualifiers, and if you don't get through those, it's like you've not been in the tournament as far as the general public are concerned. But if you qualify for the Crucible, everybody knows you're a snooker player. Yeah, good chance here. Plenty of open reds. Already, well, after this pink now, 37 points in the lead. I think he's handled the occasion very well, hasn't he? Yes. Louis Heathcote, you know, he's on the precipice of, you know, a dream come true as all these.
possible debutants with the Crucible are. And that adds a lot of pressure. But he's looked quite calm. He's playing him a former champion, which brings its own pressure. He knows how experienced Stuart Bingham is. Everything he's achieved, of course, as well in the game. So, but I think he's handled it very well up to now. Yeah, the key, uh, the great Steve Davis quote, wasn't it? Uh, the key to handling the occasion is to play like it means nothing when it means everything. But I actually saw the clip of him saying that, and it, it was at the World Championship in 1988. He'd already won the World Championship four times, so <laughs> it wasn't like he was. That was wisdom from someone who hadn't done anything. He was obviously the, the absolute master at the time. But worth listening to, obviously. And Louis yeah. Heathcote is doing that, as you say, just getting on with it without sort of looking around too much. Well, that's worked out very nicely. Yeah. Steve Davis, say. What a wily old fox. Anything. It's not worth knowing about the game. Well, he knows everything about the game and the ins and outs and the intricacies and the, the pressures and the psychology. What a master. 51. Just using the little extension here so you can reach the red. Just got to be careful here. Just want to kiss the pink on the way back. It's got to just miss it. Has done. Now it needs to slow down. Cue ball. A little bit far, a little bit pacey, but he's okay. He's on the blue. But he'll have to go in and out of ball, back up for these reds. He has scored well today. He's had breaks of 125, 65, 72, 83. So it's not been scrapping out frames. The frames he's been winning has been like this. He's been in and he's been making breaks. Ben Horst about asked about an update on the spaceman, Dominic Daly. 6-4 up, 41 points behind in this frame, but we'll uh, we'll get to that after maybe this little break here from Louis Heathcote. It's okay. Didn't want a little flick on the green, but he's not too bad. He's still... 57. Can reach this red, doesn't need the rest and hold for. Well, you'd expect him to go up for the blue here. Yeah, nice control. And that particular shot, quick glance at the score 58, 63 blue. So one more red only required. And then he can relax and concentrate and. A big break. He scored very well, hasn't he, today? As you mentioned. Yeah, he looks confident. And that's half the battle. Even if you're not feeling confident, if you look it, your opponent picks up on that. And Louis Heathcote, yeah, he's had uh, three victories already, remember. So this would be some story if he could qualify from round one. So that red is going to make it 6-5 in his favour. So, yeah, the frame is his, but we're going to uh, leave this table and go to table five. Stephen Maguire and Yuan Sijun, five each, another one set up nicely. Stephen Maguire, something of a, a crucible veteran, of course, twice semi-finalist, 19 appearances, didn't play there last year and hasn't had a great season, really. A couple of quarterfinals, but he's not in the game for, for quarterfinals, clearly. But <laughs> another player, if he qualified, you want to avoid him, clearly. Oh, yeah. Was it John Higgins he lost to in the semi-final all those years ago? It was quite a close match as well, wasn't well, it? Yeah, he was 14-10 up. Yeah. And uh, Higgins came back at him. Was it 17, 16 or 15 in the end? 15, I think, yeah. yeah. 48. <laughs> but some players, I mean, the world rankings and form and all the rest of it, I think can go out the window with some players. You just know their reputation, and everyone knows how good Maguire is on his day. Yeah.
OK, so Maguire's won that frame. It's going to be 6-5 to him. So let's see if Matthew Stevens can mount a comeback here. He's in trouble. 7-3 down, of course, having lost the first to Lazowski, but building a nice lead here, 58 in front. Louis Heathcote, uh, by the way, has made a century against Bingham, that frame we were watching. So it's his second of the day. He's playing good stuff. Matthew Stevens could do with a bit of that right now. Oh dear, and this is coming back across the table and he's going to be over the other pocket. So he's just starting to struggle a bit, is Matthew. That was a 50 break, but not enough. And you saw the, the frustration in the reaction there. The danger is this match could get right away from him in the next few minutes. Yeah, worrying times for Matthew Ollis. Still a lot to do here. Well, that applause is for Louis Heathcote, the 126, the clearance from him. Obviously got a few supporters in. Just forced its way oh, in that red, didn't it? Did wiggled in. It was the right shot to play. He could have played the easier red, but just potting that red released the red just to the left of the pink. And now, well, what a wonderful chance for a three. The red on the left hand side won't bother him as a left hander. He won't need the rest. So big moments no. in this match. Could have lost the first frame, Lizowski. Could have been 6-4. What a hammer blow this would be if he could steal this one. Applause in the background for a century of Maguire. We saw him, he knew he was going to win the frame, but he made a century, 6-5 to him. And uh, her go Chandler's pulled one back, so he's 6-5 down to Dominic Dale. We saw another inspirational player as we look at uh, Paul Collier, he'll be refereeing the final. We saw another inspirational player last year get on a run, Luca Brussel. And OK, Lazowski's crucible pedigree isn't great, but Brussel, he was even worse. He'd never won a match there. The sort of player, you know, you could see it happening possibly. Yeah. What a story that would be, wouldn't it? As Forest rank and tournament It'd be the world championship. Wow, that would be something else. But he's not true just yet. There's a 22. lot of snooker left to be played. Is he just about on this red? He's having a good look. I think he's just enough. Yeah, good pot. 23. And as I said, that red just below and to the left of the pink. That does pot. It'll probably pot into the left center as well as the right corner. He could get on the red that's close to his hand as well. He's played for the red below the pink. So the key shot will be next color to the red on the left-hand side of the table. Yeah, just gotta make sure he's away from the cushion. And it doesn't drift too far away from the red, the cue ball. And it looks about inch perfect. 
Have a look at that for a shot. Beautifully controlled. 38. Never easy. Always a little bit of adrenaline. You can overhit it, end up on the cushion, but he 39. judged it beautifully. Now, this is the shot. Up for the yellow. Well, Dave, this could be uh, a real crucial blow for Matthew Stevens. Yeah, because he's already lost a couple of close frames today. I think the way he reacted when he missed that red, he, he could he kind of knew that this was coming, and an 8-3 suddenly from a match that was close, it's becoming a bit of a procession for Lazowski. Oh, my word, that just wriggled. That just wriggled. Style it out, Jack, as you walk around the table. Still pressure on him. That's why, to get this big lead. Fifty-five. Well, he's finished slightly wrong side of the blue, so he's making a slight meal of this. Obviously more scope for it to go wrong if the white's got to travel, Six. which it has. But he just needs the pink. And he's 8-3 up, and he's 2 from the Crucible. There it goes. So he punished the miss, and Matthew Stevens is now in big trouble. He needs a big comeback. Now this was uh, the Louis. We heard the roar, and this is why he was just clearing up here a moment ago. I'd like to just show you the one two six from the Leicester man, who has gone six five up against Stuart Bingham with this break. Yeah, he's done well here, hasn't he? I mean, even earlier on in the break, he, he was, he, as I said, he looked in, you know, complete control of himself, his emotions, composure. And he's really putting it up to the former champion. Yeah, it, it's not just winning frames, it's how you win them, obviously. And this is a very confident display by Louis Heathcote. <laughs> nice stuff from him. Table two, we ju <laughs> just uh, Chris Wakely misses that red, but a 68 break. So he's pulled one back, 6-5 to Robbie Williams. Another close match. Now, Jensen Kendrick has gone 6-5 behind. But if you'd have said to him when the qualifier started, you know, on the last day, you're going to be 6-5 down in the final qualifying round, he'd have taken that clearly. Well, I guess he felt he might have been on the black there, but he isn't. He could have hit that an awful lot harder. Anywhere on the right-hand side of the table would have been enough. It's a big target, that black. Now, of course, uh, this, we call it Judgment Day. It's actually two days of the final qualifying round of this Kazoo World Championship. Tomorrow is another big one. And we've got one of the biggest hitters in the game, of course, who's been dragged into qualifying. And here he is putting the work in. Neil Robertson had that 10-2 win over Zach Shirty yesterday and uh, in serious mood on the practice table. Well, I hope he doesn't wear that hat tomorrow. <laughs> that is a bit, a bit of fashion faux pas for me. How about you, Dave? Are you like one of those hats? Well, I guess he, he's wearing it to sort of keep his hair in check. <laughs> I don't have that problem, so I wouldn't need a hat. <laughs> Looks like a tea cosy. Anyway, Neil will be up tomorrow against Jamie Jones. Black is sort of inviting there for whoever pots the next red, and it's not Jensen Kendrick, so... Luhai shouldn't steps forward. Kendrick sits down concerned. Yeah, and he will be very concerned. Easy red into the right centre. Easy black to follow, and reds 
Nicely placed. That was a very nervy one, as indeed the previous shot, the red into the corner. Oh, well, would you believe it? Hold on. Hold on a minute. Has he left the red up into the yellow pocket? I think he has. What a reprieve. It just shows how quickly the emotions can yeah. change because Kendrick sat down, sort of down in the dumps, and then <laughs> 10 seconds later, he springs out of his seat. Now, what a chance for Jensen. Got to play. Well, couldn't play a cannon, but if he misses the cannon, he should still be all right. There's the little cannon. Is it on the red? Oh. He's, is he on the red into the left corner? He's got to be, surely. Eight. Well, body language doesn't look good. Not very promising. But from this camera angle, you would expect this red to be potable. I wasn't giving it the old pretend I'm not on it and then gets down and pot it, was he? And he's playing it with a little bit of side, as you can see. A little bit of left-hand side, just swerving it slightly. Now the side will take, but took too much. So he wasn't on it. Well, it's a big opportunity missed. What is uh, a nervy little frame at the moment? So, yeah, so we'll pick this up in due course, but we want to keep across as many frames as we can. This is table seven, Ricky Walden and Mark Davis. And uh, it's 6-4 to Davis. He's won the first of the night, but Ricky Walden with a chance here to pull back to 6-5. He won a thriller last year, I seem to recall, with uh, Tet Chira Nu, who Mark Davis actually beat 10-8 in the previous round this year. This Kazoo World Championship. Ricky Walden, very imposing figure, I've always thought, in the arena. Obviously tall, that's one thing, but just the way he sort of prowls around the table, a lot of energy to the way he plays. He's played nine times at the Crucible. He was a semi-finalist in 2013, where Barry Hawkins came back at him from behind and beat him. Black puts him 33 in front. 51 on. So only two of the three reds. 29. Well, it looks like he's shaping up. Possibly leave the double. It just shows you how tight these middle pockets are. That he doesn't want to get behind the red and try and put it into that left centre pocket. Prefers to play the back double instead. Mm, certainly not a gimme. This. Looks good. Looks very good. Excellent shot. Yeah. So this black and it's snookers required. Two needed actually. Yeah. So looking like six five. Let's go to table five. Steve McGuire and Yuan Sijun. Steve Maguire, 6-5 up, and 
looking well he's about to go 7-5 so maybe Maguire just with his experience just starting to pull away and if he's going to start scoring obviously he will be a big handful He's looking good, Maguire, isn't he? I mean, as I said, he's been messing around with cues for the last few years. Changed his cue quite regularly, but it looks to have maybe a cue that he's really happy with. Remains to be seen. Yeah, we just want to show you table eight because obviously her Gu Chang is a potential debutant. Dominic Dale looking to get back to the cruise ball for the first time in 10 years. It's a fascinating sort of matchup, this. Dominic, the oldest player left in this World Championship at 52. 6-5 to Dom. Which, there'll be one that'll go 10-9, won't there? Which one's it going to be? Will it no. be this one? I there might be a few. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest. Now, can he knock this red into the yellow pocket and get on the black? Normally pretty consistent on this type of shot, but bit of pressure bit of pressure and he didn't play for the black he could have played made that shot a lot easier by just rolling that in and holding for the black into the left corner decided to hedge his bets and because of it well just made the part that bit more difficult Steve Maguire has made the century. 106 so far. Table five. Just lost the cue ball, Dominic here. Didn't judge that little kiss on the yellow as he would have liked, so a bit of work to do. Yeah, it's back-to-back -back centuries for Maguire. 7-5, as Ken says. This frame has got a way to go. But table one, Jack Lazowski is already 8-3 up and in the balls in the next. So let's pick it up because... Uh, 56. This is getting serious now for Matthew Stevens, clearly. To stand any chance, he's got to keep Lazowski on eight, but Jack's got other ideas. 57. I think that red to the left of the bunch pots into the right centre pocket. Oh, maybe a plant on there. You see the two reds there look pretty much direct onto the corner pocket. So we may play for the plant. Yeah, it looks like he's played this nicely. OK, cue ball could have done with running a few more. 64 inches to the left but this plant looks an absolute certainty yeah no problem no problem and nicely on the brown so 9-3 is imminent and one frame away from his name going into the hat on Thursday morning live on BBC Radio 5. Yeah, good performance this day, sorry, isn't it? A really good performance because at one stage it was really, really close. Yeah, exactly. And, and he played well in his last match. So Jack has found a bit of form at the right time of the season. It's been a difficult season for him, obviously dropping out the top 16, we'll tell you that, but 
He looks like he's uh, back to his old self, and he's a he's going to be dangerous. He's not through yet, but he's looking likely to qualify. He's going to be very very dangerous. Yeah, is not one of the top 16 players will certainly relish drawing Jack Lazowski in the first round, that's for sure. I think we'll just stay with this. Um, silly, we see him make the century. Ooh. 91. Well, it looks to be killing. 92. Wow, superbly well, very confident player. And once he gets on a run, you know, he can, well, frames can disintegrate very, very quickly. And that's exactly what's happened so far tonight. His first three frames have gone in a, less than an hour. Great break from Lazowski. Yeah, he's made six centuries in the two matches he's played. 9-3 on the brink of qualification. And being indeed the first player to come through the qualifiers. Now then, this was just a moment ago, uh, Stephen McGuire made a century the previous frame. So he's going to be back to back here for the Scott. Yeah, so 7-5, he's annoyed missing that, isn't he? But he's playing well, back-to-back -back tons. Anyway, Jensen Kendrick, one of the big stories of the qualifiers. Has a chance here for six each. 20 in front, needs the last red. This We saw a few errors in this frame, but just basically got to pop this. And it looks like he's six each. If he qualifies, that will be one of the, the stories of the whole season for me because, you know, he's done very little. He's missed that. Wow. Oh, just needed the red. Just needed the red. Uh, that's what this tournament does to you. You can pot anything, but you can miss anything as well. Now, will he try and take the green off the cushion? I just played the snooker. Tried to play the snooker, but could have. I well, didn't even think about it. Could have taken the green off the cushion there, made his life a lot easier. Should he get another chance, Liu Hao Chan? But what a miss from Jason Kendrick. We've got to get that out of your mind. It's gone. We got away with it. Yeah, has he played a decent shot here? Yeah, he's got the red safe, more importantly. Has he got the snooker? Might be a gap between yellow and brown. <coughs> Very clever shot from Lu Ho Tian. judged it perfectly now he's got to be careful here Jason Kendrick if he hits it anyway with Pacey well he's gone for pace trying to get some separation oh what a shot <laughs> well I didn't see that one he was in the angle off the middle pocket and hitting the red on the way back but he's left a double now will he take it on No. Oh, he's missed the boat here. Liu Hao Tian. Tried to play the snooker, but it could have easily played the double and the snooker at the same time.
pulling that red towards the cushion, willing it and willing it, and it worked. Kendrick, of course, with the green safe, does have a certain amount of uh, insurance for now, but he'd be so disappointed, of course, to miss the red in the first place when he had a golden chance to win this frame. Yeah, and it's also not only winning the frame there, although he might get a chance here again, yeah, but not also winning the frame as he does get another chance, another poor shot from Liu Hotian. But it's the, it's the sort of the mental exertion and energy that you're born up when you don't put those frame balls just the doubt creeps in and the next one comes along he's got away with it this time made sure of the red concentrated on it so much well he's lost position 28 in front so it's important that he gets a gets a color here very important oh what's he doing taking the pink what isn't he just trying to pot the brown Taking the pink off the cushion. Well, that's not a good shot at all. Okay, well, the snooker needed there. We'll uh, be back if Lou gets it. We're going to go to table eight. Uh, Go Chang trying to level up with Dominic Dale. Well, we just missed frame ball, actually. He didn't, though, so <laughs> so he's happy. 41 in front, a couple of snookers needed. And that red makes sure. So it's going to be six all. Very impressive from hey, Guo Chang. Every time he's gone behind, he's come back. Shown a lot of resilience for a young man. Yeah, exactly. He's really standing up to it well. The other end, aid, end of the age scale is Mark Davis, 51 years of age. And he is looking to go 7-5 over Ricky Walden. In fact, we just got there as the frames ended. But 7-5, Mark Davis, just uh, with that nice cushion. And, of course, if he can win the next before the interval, he's looking good. Matthew Stevens, though, not looking so good. 9 3 down. Seven. Yeah, back against the wall here for Matthew Stevens. Seven frames in a row he needs. Eight. Mm, was it just crept? I thought it might have just crept the top side of the blue, but no, not this time. <coughs> Go back to that green that he missed, David, with the left hand into the corner pocket. I think that was to close the gap to, what, 6-4? Big frame, wasn't it? Right, we're going to go back to table four. J uh, Lou Aisha needed a snooker. He was 30 behind with 25 on. Kendrick has just missed from the snooker, hit the blue. So he can tie the frame now, Lou Aisha. This would be a massive blow if he could win it on a respot. Oh. But what's he done here? Oh, my goodness. Look what's happened. What has he done? Too much right-hand side on the cue ball. And he snookered himself. <laughs> so he's got to play off two cushions here, hit the brown. Full ball, knock it up the table and try and get it safe. Hoping to get it safe. No, that's poor. 
Wow, so disappointing for Liu Haotian, but for Jensen Kendrick, he'll be absolutely delighted. Well, this is what I was saying earlier. It feels like the stars are sort of aligning for Kendrick, because even when he's making blunders, he's sort of not being punished. Still not potted that, but we're back to Liu Haotian needing, well, wants to tie. He's in one, I think, as well. Three. We're going to go to table three, where uh, Jack Jones and Zhou Yu Long are doing battle, and it's uh, this is the position. Zhou Yu Long missing the red, trying to make it six five. I'm going to disappear for a little bit, and Rob's going to take over with Ken. Okay, enjoy your dinner, Dave. We'll see you shortly. Now. Jack Jones, back of the table, 12 points in the lead, 6-4 ahead. Great chance. Rob Walker joins us. Well, how was your curry, Rob? Hope it was all right. Very nice, actually, Ken. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. Suitably, uh, suitably refreshed and armed, ready for what could be a very late evening, although... Mm. Lazowski racing to 9-3. What a, what a yeah, turnaround. This is a really important stage here. Jack Jones, 12 points in the lead. A chance. Needs to slow up. Has it got to go straight? Has he got an angle? He's okay. He's got a slight angle on the blue. <coughs> Judge nicely. So blue, yellow and green will be enough for a 7-4 lead for Jack Jones in this well, trawling encounter. Played really well, Jack Jones. From 4-2 down, he's had, well, four big breaks. And now, well, this could be one of the most important frames he's won tonight, if he can steal this. Yellow, green, and brown would be a certainty. Well, there are signs he's coming alive at just the right time of the season. Last 16 of the Welsh, beat Hussein Vafai, lost to Dominic Dale. Dominic currently uh, six apiece against Guo Chang on table eight. But what a run to the quarters last year at the Crucible. Jack Jones was a revelation. He was so calm and composed. And that steady temperament is serving him well here. And all of a sudden, a three frame advantage and three frames away from a second successive crucible appearance. 20. Now, he's over the line here, so let's get across to table one if we can, because Jack Lazowski's in the balls on a break of 28. He's just about to draw level in points in this frame. And he could get the job done and secure his eighth appearance at the Crucible with this visit, Ken. Yeah, he's played really well tonight. Played really, really well. Looked confident. Once he got his nose in front, OK, he came in with a 6-3 lead. Could have easily been 5-4. But it's just looked very, very sharp. And as this match has gone on, Rob, he's just looked a lot more confident. 36. Matthew, well, lost that frame to go really to narrow the gap to. I think it was just the two frames, but that was a lovely little shot. He's had a quick look, glance at the score again. 42. 12 points the lead. He's going to need two of these reds, two colours. 43. And the yellow. And he might be the first man into the draw on Thursday morning that Rob, of course, you'll be doing with Mark Allen at BBC Radio 5 Live. Yes. Yes, around about a quarter to nine. It's going to be streamed on the red button and it will be shown on the BBC Sport website as well. And no one's going to want to hear the name Jack Lazowski next to them. If he plays at the Crucible, the manner in which he has done in this match against Matthew, especially 
the way in which it looks as though he's going to finish the match off. Yeah. And he's finished it off in style as well. 57. Uh, this has been a tough match for Matthew Stevens. He's hoping to make it back to the Crucible. Of course, he's had some success there, been beaten in a couple of finals. But 62. just come up a little bit short against this man. And just played some exemplary snooker tonight and this afternoon. 66. Superb from Jack Lazowski. And soon after the end of the match, we will be able to hear from him. By the way, Heathcote's on a break of 33, six apiece with Bingham. And Stephen Maguire is in the balls again at 7-5. But as far as table one is concerned, it started brilliantly when they traded centuries. But Lazowski went into the break, 6-3 in front. And he has hit the afterburners tonight. An early finish against a world-class opponent. Lazowski will be in the draw for the Crucible at quarter to nine on Thursday morning. Brilliant performance for the jackpot. 10-3 against the two-time runner-up, Matthew Stevens. Yeah, well done, Jack Lazowski. So where are we going next? Table six. Here we are. Stuart Bingham locked in a right tussle with Louis Heathcote. Is that a possible plant? Three ball, maybe even a four ball plant here. No. Playing the loose red just to the right of the pink spot, trying to cut it back into this corner pocket. And if that plant was on, well, certainly not now. <sighs> Looks like a... a bit more snooker left in this frame. So, what is Stuart Bingham looking at here? Knocking a red back up into the ball, just trying to shit dynamics here. But where the red has landed, there was he can run the cue ball off one of these reds on the right hand side and leave the cue ball somewhere near the green pocket and could put Stuart in a, a little bit of butter here I'd like to get a red safe oh doesn't want to go in off oh this is poor if this goes in off wow oh <laughs> Very lucky there, Louis Haycote. Well, first man into the draw for Tours Day is the jackpot, Jack Lazowski. He's talking with Rob Walker. Into the draw from this cauldron that is the English Institute of Sport. Many, many congratulations. Thank you. And look, it seems as though you're back in the groove. It hasn't been a perfect season by your own high standards, but the manner in which you closed it out there tonight against Matthew shows that the touch is back. And you must have been so determined coming here to, to, to get that taste of Crucible action. We know you've gone deep at the Crucible before. It's a brilliant place. And actually, sometimes tradition shows that top seeds who just fall out of the 16 and have to qualify arrive for round one pin sharp mm. yeah i saw ding do it once and um 
that was the plan that that was the just trying to just trying to turn kind of like a negative into a positive and i got two really good games uh, match practice under my belt there and you know matthew played he, he looked sharp to me today i don't think he played bad and um i was still able to sort of get on top of him so i think that's a, a really good sign for me it, it was a big moment wasn't it because it looked like he was going to get back to within one and then that red just came off the rail and all of a sudden instead of five four it was six three but the manner in which you finished it tonight showed showed precision yeah obviously over a long a long match sometimes you're going to get close frames and i managed to nick the one before the interval and then also the the one after the interval those were two really big frames and then you know when i was getting in i was scoring but, but so was he so it was just kind of like who could get in i thought it was a really good game it really was i mean it, and and you know the 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 pattern was set with those two centuries that you traded right at the beginning of the match and, and it was it was absolutely absorbing just give people an insight into into how nerve-wracking it can be coming here to the qualifiers because you know the wider public who don't necessarily follow snooker closely they might think oh yeah it's it's a breeze getting to the crucible this is earned with blood sweat and tears isn't it uh, well i mean it's definitely easier than playing in the masters or the crucible but yeah obviously you you really want to get there and it's like you, you it's a no win really you know you, you you're expected to get there and you can only lose so I've won my games. I'm there. Um, happy days. Really, a bit of a relief, but you know, it's the I've been there now for like the last five or six years. So I really want to try and do well this year. And I guess the only name, and he would say the same, that you want to avoid in the draw. You don't want to come up against Judd, do you? Not in the first round. You've been one of your best mates. I know you've contested some great ranking finals. You pushed him close at the Grand Prix a couple of years ago. Judd will be the one you want to avoid. Yeah, obviously, I don't want to play him. I don't want to play uh, Milkins. He's my mate as well, and then. I mean, you never really want to play Ronnie, do you? So yeah, there's a few, a few you want to avoid. But um, I mean, I'd be lying if I said I'm not watching. It is, a, it is quite a big, uh, a big draw on um, on Thursday. So yeah, Thursday morning, folks, tune in. Set the alarm, quarter to nine. Uh, I believe we've got a couple of shots uh, just to uh, just to talk you through the back end of uh, of your match. You, you had some wonderful moments. Yeah, this was just uh, wrapping it up. 66. Try and play this bit of screw here. Look, overhit it by a mile. Uh, yeah, what do you want me to say? Oh, I've won at this point. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was. It, it was uh, like I said. I thought it was a really good game. He, he played. Matthew's like a stinking draw. Um, he's such a good player. And um, seven just seven if it wasn't for a few kind of close games, you know, God knows what could have happened today. Well, enjoy the next couple of days. Set the alarm. Quarter to nine Thursday morning. One name you'll hear coming out from the qualifiers is the jackpot, Jack Lazowski. You've got to be in it to win it, and he is. Well done, Jack. See you at the Crucible. <laughs> yeah, one name. First name into the draw, David. And uh, not a lot of players are going to welcome yeah. getting his name pulled hey. out of the hat, eh? Well, it's how he got there, isn't it? Yeah. It's how well he played that uh, people will have noticed for sure. So we're at table two. Chris Wakelin, six each with Robbie Williams. Yeah, this match has been back and forth, hasn't it? All the time. Robbie Williams went 6 4 up. Wakelin pulled the back 42 point lead, but Robbie Williams back in. There's a chance. Close that gap. So tight, isn't it? All the way around. Yeah. I mean, Maguire, okay, 8 5, but 6, there's a couple of, well, 6 all. Lou Ho Tian, Jason Kendrick, Robbie Williams, of course, Wakelin, 6 all. Bingham, he coat six all. Six. Dale, just gone seven, six up against Go Chang. So close. We could have a dramatic finish in a few of these matches tonight. That's what we're hoping for in anyway, David. <laughs> I know you want to get out early and have a point somewhere. <laughs> now, now, Ken. <laughs> I'll be here to the end, no matter what. Okay, so Robbie Williams trying to fight back here, but uh, we want to keep you across as many matches as possible. J Jensen Kendrick has been involved in quite an emotional roller coaster already. He did win that last frame, and now he's poised for a 7 6 lead. 54 in front here. Yeah, he really has done so well. I mean, even when he's fallen behind, you know, he's come back. He went in that last frame. Okay, just scraped over it. Missed an easy red, but just eventually scraped over it. And now all of a sudden, you know, he's got his tail back up.
red and black will put him 68 ahead with 67 remaining. I really, what a wonderful story this is. And if he does make it to the Crucible, well, it will be the story of the qualifiers, no doubt. I guarantee him a two-year card. Seven. He must win this match to stay on the tour as well. So there's a lot riding on it. First time at the Crucible, stay on the tour. A lot of pressure, but he's holding up well. Frame ball. Oh, oh, no, it's happened again. It happened in the last frame with the red, and he's missed the black. That was to lead by 68 with 67 on, and he's saying, why do I do this to myself? What is he down there? I mean, why is he even trying to get close to the red? He, there's nothing on. Just pot the black and play a good safety shot. Yeah, could be in trouble here, look. Snookered. Oh. <laughs> this, uh, as a snooker player, this is the worst feeling in the world. You know, when you have the frame of your mercy, you miss a straightforward pot, and now you've got to put yourself through the ringer. I'm sure Liu Hao Channel might split up these reds. If you can see the, the bottom red, of the bunch, he could split the reds up here, get them in the open, put even more pressure on Kendrick if he messes up with a safety shot. I'd like to be splitting up the reds here around and bring the pink into play here. Well. Good shot though, very, very good shot. I'll put it this way, if Kendrick does qualify, he won't have done it the easy way. He's making things difficult for himself. Jack Jones pulling away. He's going to be 8-4 over Zhou Yulong. He was 4-2 down. So that's six frames in a row from the Welshman quarter finalist last year. Oh. oh, dear. Well, it could go wrong here. He's got an easy red. But he's got to get the cue ball out far enough for blue or black. Now, does this red, if this red goes into the left center, well then pink could follow? No. Yeah, let's see. It's definitely the middle red pots, but how does he get out? Doesn't like it, so he's taken the bottom red, back up for the black. Needs high value colors, don't forget. No, wow, what? just feel that whatever mistakes Kendrick is making, he's just not being punished as clinically as he might be. I can tell you, Louis Heathcote's gone 7-6 up on uh, Stuart Bingham. Mark Davis 7-6 over Ricky Walden. Dominic Dale 7-6 over her. Gu Chang. And Chris Wakelin has won that frame we were just watching on table two. So he's 7-6 up on Robbie Williams. Now, where's everything going to finish? Double kiss? Not quite. But the kiss on the red has left the red, which is what Kendrick needs. As I say, just things just slightly happening for him. Even when he's making errors, he's got another chance. Now, he doesn't need to do anything heroic here. Just pop the red. So, it, after all that, it looks like he's 7 6 up. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of 7 6s now, isn't there? Eh? And Jack Jones, nice break, 104. 8 4 up against Shu Yu Long. Wow. 
That is not a score I expected. Thought that would be an awful lot closer. Six. Yeah, I'm sure there'll be plenty of uh, twists and turns yet, but as it is, in this match, Jensen Kendrick, when he's making mistakes, just not being punished. Well, this could be quite incredible. Of our eight matches, though, when this frame finishes, six of them, one is finished, and the other five, the other six, are all on the mid-session interval. And the only one still playing will be the 8-4, which is Jack Jones and Zhao Yulong. Process of elimination, then. That's the one we'll be going to in a minute. But, uh, yeah, they're rattling through the frames, actually, aren't they? You know, there's not been any sort of marathons tonight yet. That might happen. But, anyway, 7-6, Kendrick going to the interval with that lead over Lu Hai Shan. Congratulations again to Jack Lazowski. And just to clarify, the draw will be Thursday morning, be 8.45 British time, be live on BBC Five Live. You can watch it on their website as well. And uh, we will know the full line at the 32 players. Obviously, the top 16 in one hat, the 16 qualifiers in another. Yeah, uniquely, there's nothing happening at all now. <laughs> there's, no, there's no action going up. They're setting up the table for frame 12 on table three. So, desperation strikes. They're going to put us on the camera, Ken, I think, <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> well, they must be desperate. Yeah. <laughs> Here we are, mm. the darling Hello. of Dublin. <laughs> Hello. So, Jack Lazowski again. I mean, it was not only winning, it's how handsomely he won. Yeah, I thought he was really good tonight. Once he got that little lead, 6-3, you know, that could have easily been 5-4. Uh, and once he came out tonight, he just relaxed straight in from the first from the first frame. Matthew had a good chance, I think, in the second frame to close the gap again. Missed it on that green, and I think that was the big turning point. I thought that was uh, that was the straw that broke the camel's back, as it were. And um, yeah, he just pulled away and looked. He looked very fluent, looked very confident. And even though there's a lot of pressure on those guys because you know he's the one that's fallen out of the top 16, has to come back to qualify. He didn't really show it that much, and I think that was very, very impressive. And that will give him great confidence going into that draw on Tours Day. Whatever day he's going to play and wherever he's going to going to meet, whether it might be his good friend, Judd Trump, whether it'll be Ronnie O'Sullivan or anybody else, he'll be going in there with that little bit of confidence that he's sort of been lacking over the last couple of months. And it's great to see him because he's such a nice lad and what a wonderful talent as well. Just get your views on the t tomorrow's big match. Obviously, yeah. Neil Robertson, Jamie Jones. Mm. I mean, Jamie Jones, it must be remembered, was just, was a quarter-finalist at the Crucible back yeah. in 2012. That's not any sort of pushover for Robert. <clears throat> no, not at all. And particularly, you know, on these qualifiers again. Uh, but I thought Robbo in his first match, even though he started a bit slow uh, yesterday, uh, but came through in the end. You know, those first couple of frames against Zach Surety could have gone either way. Zach should have really won those first two frames. But I think Robbo uh, looked pretty good. And um, even though it's a big, once again, coming back here, back to grassroots, trying to qualify for the Crucible, he hasn't done that for a long, long time. So it would have been a bit of a culture shock, but he looked very, very impressive. I think that's going to be, but that's going to be a tough match for him against Jamie Jones. Just to say, we'll be back with the live action when there is any. At the moment, there's no snooker actually going on. Another interesting one, Nop and Senkam, Jackson Page. Because yeah. Jackson's played the before. He was in the semis of the World Open recently. So yeah. that could be an absolute cracker. Yeah, it could be. And, of course, Nop on. I saw him last night in the restaurant. He was celebrating with his wife and, and of course, Mink and uh, Bipat, all from, uh, who were all playing and all uh, practicing at Ding Jung Wee's Academy. They were all having a little dinner together. And I went over to congratulate him on his 147. If if he makes a 147 tomorrow, he gets 147,000 pounds. But I'm sure that will be in the back of his mind. First priorities is trying to win that match. But that's another, yeah, mouth-watering prospect because Jackson Page uh, is back with a little bit of confidence as well after that wonderful run in the World Open. This is our venue, the English Institute of Sport yeah. here in Sheffield. And uh, we're a few miles away from the Crucible. Mm. It's kind of within touching distance. Anyway, I think uh, table three, they're about to resume. Mm. It's a great venue, though, isn't it? You know, and the crowds have been great all week. Uh, you know, from day one of the qualifiers, they were queuing up outside to come in today because of the melt watering uh, matches and prospect. And it, it's great to see. There's such great uh, snooker enthusiasts. Still love coming to watch live snooker and love watching the qualifiers. And, of course all the snooker enthusiasts that have been tweeting us all around the world, David. I mean, it's quite incredible. As far as New Zealand, Cape Town, as we mentioned, South Carolina and America, all at Japan and Seoul, Korea. 
not Wales and Dublin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's brilliant. And Jack Jones has been brilliant from 4-2 down. He's had breaks of 84, 93, 88, 52 and 126. So he's really turned it on and show you Long, who's not played at the Crucible for five years, in a spot of bother here. Big frame for him. He can still get out of it from here, but obviously 9-4 is looking very unlikely. Just to reiterate, well, in fact, they've just restarted on table five as well. Maguire 8-5 upon Wancy Jones. So two matches on at the moment as Jack Jones misses them completely there. Marcel Eckhart in charge here. But the in-off just makes it interesting because uh, Show you Long considering taking the long red on. So just to uh, reiterate, they've start restarted as well over on table five. Stephen Maguire looking to press on now. He's 8-5 up. Yuan Sijun needing to peg him back if he is to secure a Crucible debut. Eight. Yeah, he's a dangerous player. He had a sort of a first flourishing, dropped off the tour, got back on. Has had a lot of good scalps. It's actually 3-2 to Maguire on their personal head-to-head. -head. But he beat Michael White, who was never easy to beat, 10-8 in the last round. Did uh, Yuan Sijun, 37 in the world. That's his highest ever ranking, actually. And he's played a nice shot there, so every chance here to press on in this frame. 16. That's two reds, two blacks. Oh. <laughs> uh, five, ten, yeah, twelve. So this would be three reds, three blacks still. And a nicely spread. I think we stay with this for a little while, Dave. Let's see what happens here. I know it went a little bit early, but. 24. You never know. One other practice partner, Juan Cijon. Uh He had a 147 in the UK qualifiers, which meant if he got a 147 here, he'd be up for the prize as well. But that didn't happen. He lost to uh, Alfie Borden in the last round. 30. A couple of rounds ago, as you see. So this will be five reds, five blacks. Mm. And that will be end of maybe trying to play for a black here because frame is much more important. He doesn't have a great angle. I think he's going to play for blue. Let's see. Yeah, he's played for the blue. Um, I don't blame him. Just didn't get high enough for the red to, to keep on the black. So try and keep the break going. Make sure the frame pull it back to within two. Yeah, the, the rattling through the frames, aren't they, and all the tables, you know, you yeah. sort of associate this round, I mean, remember <coughs> the two-hour frame with Fergal and Dave Gilbert, but yeah. you sort of associate it with long drawn-out frames, it's not actually happened. Yeah, and just a quick word as well that we haven't mentioned yet, but a quick word of congratulations to the table fitters, you know, eight tables, pristine conditions, and of course the four practice tables as well, they have a tough job, you know, over the course of the week or so, eight nine days whatever it long it takes for this these qualifiers and they're here from morning till night looking after them and i must say the tables have been top quality conditions wise congratulations to them lads as well they do a 
They do a great job. Oh, he's played a nice shot there. He just forced the angle. Didn't have a great angle on the black, so he had to stun it in. Just widen the angle of the cue ball to get on this red. Good break this so far. Yeah, it's all he needs really to take the fight to Maguire with some heavy hitting of his own to sort of say to Maguire, I just need one chance, I'm going to win the frames. As he plays into them, he's still on this red to left middle. Doesn't look like it the way he's brought his cue down. Took a bit of a risk there, really, playing the cannon. May still have the red to right middle, but it's a nasty shot. He's just checking. Doesn't look like he's on the red. He's behind to the left middle. So it's going to be this more difficult one. And it's not there, so this frame by no means done yet. 66 in front, still seven reds on, 83 points. was a cracking red for Steve Maguire. Clean as a whistle. Yeah, he's just got to drop this dead weight, the blue. Try and hold for the red over the middle. Yeah, just about. He's playing on two reds there. One of the these reds that are open into this corner pocket, but also if it ran too far, he always had the red over the left centre. But he's got options here. What a turn around this could be I think it's probably worth staying on this day because this could be yeah. well huge steal for Steve McGuire once he's on in with 62 yeah he chose to, to play cannon into the reds you know with the were loose reds to go out and it was a bit of a risk and it didn't pay off Could have done with that cue ball. Just another couple of inches down this end of the table, being a little bit straighter on one of these reds. So he's having to screw off this red, back up for blue. Knocking the other red towards the pocket. It's okay. Okay, he's got less points to deal with, but should be okay. Just makes this. <laughs> Makes the task just a little bit more difficult. Blue will put him on 19 points. So he's 47 behind. So he needs 48 points from a possible 51 with the last three reds remaining. Would have loved him for that red to stay over the corner pocket. Well, that's a big moment, clearly, missing that black with the chance to clear, and Johan is going to be so relieved, just needs this red. In fact, he's already, because he's missed the black, 46 in front, 43 on, but the red will make sure. 
And so relief for him, 8-6. We'll see whether that's the start of a, of a comeback or not. Now, they're resuming all around the, the arena. Table two, Robbie Williams on a break of 40 here. 7-6 down to Chris Wakelin. Yeah, I don't think he's on that red. It's pretty tight. It looks almost touching, doesn't it? The red cue ball is closest to. Has he got enough of the red? And if he takes it on and misses it, well, it could prove very costly. He's got to be so careful here. Might be a bit of time before he works this out. In fact, I don't think he's going to play for it now. I think he's going to play a safety shot. Williams Trying to put a red safe with a 40 point lead. Let's go to table three, though, because it's amazing how this match has sort of changed around a little bit. Jack Chow and Xiu Yulong. 8-4, Jack Jones. He was on 44, just missed the black into the corner. Let's go to table number three and let's see what's happening over there with Jack Jones and Zhao Yulong. Miss Black from Jack Jones. He's left it in the corner pocket. He's got a 39 point lead, but there could be a bit of snooker left in that, particularly with the black of where it is. But that's a good safety shot. Very, very good. So all these frames, all these matches in the balance, Dominic Dale and her Gu Chang is a very interesting one in its own right. It's 7-6 to Dale, 34 nil up in the next. And maybe with a chance here, 10 years since he last played at the Crucible. Do you remember one of the times that he qualified for the Crucible, he came out in that white suit and red short? Was it a frilly short? I can't remember, but it was a red short and white suit. Wow. Now, now Dominic, he probably still has it. <laughs> well, he might get the chance to wear it again, maybe. This year at the Crucible. So I asked him for a 99 and he didn't know what I was talking about. Well, I'll tell you what, he'd like a 99 here because it would put, put him 8 6 up, won't it? With a flake on top. <laughs> Such a character, Dominic Dale. Delicate little shot. He's got to play the cannon. Yeah, he's played it nicely. Look at that. Beautiful little shot. Held the cue ball nicely. Judged the cannon perfectly. All building. Nice little lead.
Yeah, he's still a really good player, and he's deadly serious when he's playing. That's the other thing. You know, the sort of all the rest of it can wait until he's off table, but when he's out there, you know, he, he's trying as hard as anybody. This red needs an angle on the pink. No, no good. But we'll still make sure of this pink just for the points alone. 58 points that will put him in the lead. And a strong favourite to take this very important 14th frame. Well, he could take the pink for the points, but he wants to play the green and just have a little bit of extra insurance, try and put the green onto the right-hand side cushion, put it safe, but he hasn't done that. So maybe not the correct choice. OK, so there's a little bit of mileage left in that one, but Jack Jones, he got back in on that frame on table three we were watching earlier. And we can show you him powering on now to 9-4. So Jack Jones looking favourite to be the second qualifier after, of course, Jack Lazowski's 10-3 win over Matthew Stevens. Wales is such a great snooker heritage, of course. We just saw Mark Williams, the great Mark Williams, win the Tour Championship recently. Of course, he's one of three Welsh world champions, along with Ray Reardon and Terry Griffiths. But they've had many other terrific players as well down the years. Jackson Page, of course... Uh, one of the new brigade will be in action tomorrow, as I mentioned earlier, against Nop and Senkam. Jamie Jones taking on Neil Robertson. It has been a quiet season for Jack Jones. Last 16 of the Welsh Open, his best run, actually. So maybe hasn't pressed on as he would have hoped from last year. But if he's back at the Crucible, all is well again. And that's looking very likely now. 54. Yeah, he was 4-2 down, so it's seven frames in a row. He's made sizable breaks in most of them. We talk about dangerous qualifiers, but of course everyone well aware of what he did last year, so he's another one. It's a long list of people <laughs> the seeds don't particularly want to draw. He'd be on it now. I think he impressed a lot of people at the Crucible last year. So it's a clearance of 81, Jack Jones at the interval leads Zhou Yulong 9-4 and he's one away from qualifying. Now, Stephen Maguire 8, Yuan Shijun 6, we saw Yuan win that last frame. Maguire in early in frame 15, just looking to hold his opponent off. I had a message from Neil Folds, who maybe has got nothing better to do, I don't know. But he's, uh, I'm, what I mean by that is this question, Ken. He mm. says, do you know of anyone who's played at the Crucible with a longer name than Alexander Ursenbacher? What a question. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're not including middle names, obviously. Oh, wow. Oh, that's even put Steve McGuire off, that question. Well, uh, that was amazing, wasn't it? That miss, it just shows anything's missable. What about uh, Detroit Pilm Jane? Not as many letters, no. You have to count those, eh? I've got enough to do. <laughs> <laughs> True. <coughs> well, that was a bad miss for Maguire. Maybe he's just feeling it. Miss Black in the previous frame when he had a chance to steal. Yeah, it, it's we're at that point now, aren't we? You know, yeah. the sort of the matches. <laughs> it's coming towards an end, but not necessarily in your favour. The pressure's no, on. Absolutely. Tells a lot about players. They're all going to be feeling it. There's no doubt about it. No matter how much experience you've had, the only one who's sort of sailed through is Jack Lizowski. Six. But uh, yeah. McGuire looks all of a sudden 
Off the ground, 85 up is a little bit edgy. It's understandable. Seven. Yeah, let's go over to Stuart Bingham, a former world champion. Table six. He's seven six down to Louis Heathcote. We'll come back to this frame. But let's just have a little look around and go to Bingham's table. He's in the balls. Well, this is a good chance. I mean, Stuart Bingham around the black spot with reds like this, you'd normally expect him to win the frame, but it's not really normal, is it? <laughs> the qualifying, a lot can happen. We've seen that already. But this is his territory for sure. Very uh, heavy scorer. Bingham has had 577 centuries in his career before today. Nobody wants to miss out on the Crucible, but Stuart, you know, he's such a snooker fan as much as a player, obviously former champion. I mean, I don't know what he would do if he didn't qualify because he can't even go on holiday these days. He's on telly everywhere. So maybe just uh, get rid of the telly and all streaming services and keep your head down for 17 days. He could be there, of course. And if he was, he'd be a threat with his record. It's only three years since he was last in the semis, lost that epic to Mark Selby. Yeah, they always say form is temporary, class is permanent, and he is a classy, classy player, Stuart Bingham. 45. But he's going to have to produce some of his magic in this match and to see it through because Louis Heathcote has really put him to the real test. Should win the frame from this visit, no doubt. And it should go seven all. Let's just stay with it until he gets to that line. And then we can have a look around. Ricky Walden. Oh, he's closing in on seven all. He's, he's on a 59 break. Just the yellow left on the table. He's 22 ahead. Yeah, this frame looks gone. Let's go to Ricky Walden, Mark Davis on the next table, table seven. Ricky Walden on a 61 break. He was 37 behind. 24, the difference. Needs the green to level up once again. Seven all. What a tussle these two lads are having. Very unusual stance there from Ricky Walden. Oh, cue ball, very close, very close. He's okay. Good shot and a good break this is from Ricky Walden. I mean, it's easy to say now, but to be fair, we said it earlier on, this always had the look this match of being close and it's gonna be seven each bar and a couple of snookers from Mark Davis. So, barring a couple of snookers, seven each. But what about uh, Lou Hyshen and Jensen Kendrick? That looks like going seven each as well. At the moment, it's seven six to Kendrick. Lou Hyshen, as we pick it up, just as about got over the line. Snookers needed. So, again, another close one. Jensen Kendrick, one of the real stories of these qualifiers coming from round one. And more than standing up here in this match. But we're coming to that phase now where the pressure's really going to come to bear because it's not just about this match it's about the whole event for him he's played four matches he was there in the, on the first morning against Bayou Lou when this began last Monday and he's here on judgment day but Lou Hyashan of course has qualified three times so he knows what you need to do to get through Somebody tweeted into Fowlsey's question. What about Sonny Akani? Did uh, Sonny Akani, did he qualify for the World Championship one no. year? No, maybe not. 
didn't qualify for the Crucible, but played in the World Championship. Right, let's go back to uh, Steve Maguire and you see John Maguire with a chance here. He's got that red safe on the side cushion. That's going to play a part. But with a chance for 9-6. 22. Needs a kiss. He's got it, and he's okay. Well, I say he's okay. 28. It's not straightforward. It's sort of betwixt and between. I thought he was going to be okay for the red into the left center. But... Wow, an awkward angle. Yeah, he doesn't like it into the middle, so he's playing it into the corner because the cue ball is running back for safety into the bulk area. Good shot. No attempt at a pot here. This is roll up behind the brown time and try and get a few points from from the snooker. Okay, well we'll be back with this. Just to say, uh, Bingham won that frame, so seven each, seven each, Walden and Davis. It's seven each, Lou Hyshen and Jensen Kendrick, and it's seven each, Robbie Williams and Chris Wakelin. As we pick it up on table two, Williams with a chance to edge in front. Lou Hyson had a century, by the way, in that frame we were watching with Kendrick. <laughs> it really is tight wherever you look, but it's, it's quick fire snooker, isn't it? They're, you know, these are, they're all attacking. It's good to see. They're all trying to win these matches, get to the crucible, playing good attacking snooker. Thank you. Robbie Williams has qualified three times, but not since 2016. So eight years it's been since he played there. Been in a, a three ranking semi-finals. Jack Jones gone nine four up on Zhu Yu Long. He was four two down at one stage, you know. He's won seven frames in a row, Jack Jones. Great performance so far. Mm, it's okay. Using all his cue power, springing that cue ball off the right hand side cushion. Back for these reds. A nice little kiss on the pink. 36. Now, well, he played a little cannon. When potting this red, okay, you could go through the little gap between red and black, but if he plays the cannon on the red, he'd be perfect on the black. Didn't play the cannon, decided to bounce the cue ball instead. He's still okay. But that red is close to the left-hand side cushion. He's going to need that, Robbie Williams, if he's going to win the frame from this visit. Ooh. Uh, didn't play that too well. So, break goes to 51, 13. He's having a good look at the score. He's 13 ahead, so he's going to need, as I said, all three remaining reds. 52. Now, when potting this pink, could leave a nice angle 
on the loose red. So when he puts the loose red, bring the other red into play. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Robbie, Robbie, Robbie. Should have just rolled that red, roll that pink in. Leave a nice angle on the red. What are you doing, man? Stunned it in. He's left himself, well, very, very awkward. Could cost him. Now he's got no chance of getting that red away from the cushion. And he's struggling a little bit here. Using the spoiler, digging down on the cue ball. Yeah, just lost his way, didn't he? So not even going to be able to attempt the red to move it. This is why he ended up horrible here. He's got to get a colour safe. Put the green safe or put the pink safe. But he's got to get some insurance. Yeah, good break, but could have been an awful lot better. Shot on the pink a couple of shots ago. Oh, baffles me. Okay, yeah, go, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll be back with this uh, in due course, but we want to try and keep a, a flavour of all the matches. So this is table six, Bingham and Heathcote. This is a belted match, actually. Seven each now. Stuart Bingham in front in this frame. Yeah, that semi-final <laughs> that he was in with Selby, it's the only one ever to go to a fifth session. I mean, they're long enough, those matches, three days, four sessions, but they still didn't get it finished. Had to come back after the Karen wilson Shaw murphy semi-final. Mark Selby got the, the win 17-15. Bruising match to lose that. That semi-final, you're so close, obviously, to the final, but not to be. Oh, and not to be there for Stewart. So that was a promising opening, but didn't come to much. Now, again, we want to try and get across all the action. Table seven, Mark Davis, reds and blacks is on. He couldn't, could he? At the age of 51. John Higgins is the oldest player to make maximum in tournament play. That was at the Championship League this season. The last one four seven I got was a bus, David. You know, <laughs> so long ago. <laughs> but a really good chance here for Mark Davis. Look at the Reds, the way they split. Well, this would be something, wouldn't it? After last year, when he lost ten nine to Joe Perry and thought his career was over. Puff of the cheeks. <laughs> just come a little bit awkward, a little bit straight. Angle's not great on the on the black. What can he do with the cue ball? That's not bad. He's left the, the red up into the yellow pocket. And he can screw back for the black. Into the left corner. Seven reds, seven blacks. Oh, great shot. Wow. Uh, obviously, trying to win the frame is priority, but 
It's a wonderful chance here, a really wonderful chance for Mark Davis. Just to say, Steve Maguire won that frame we were watching, so he's 9-6 over Yuancy Jun, but we are not moving from this table. You can guarantee that for now to see if Mark Davis, the day after Nop and Senkarm made, uh, is only the 20th maximum in the World Championship in its history. Can Mark Davis make the 21st? Those two reds that are close together, just to the right of the pink. They're still potable, so he doesn't have to go into them, but he could play a little cannon on them if he wished here. No. Didn't fancy it, but still okay. Now, this is the important red. Pots this red, he's won the frame. And then he can relax and then go for this, well, maximum break. What a time to do it. Oh, just a little bit low on the black here. Bit of work to do with the cue ball. has got to dig into it to try and hold it. Maybe just drop it in. Yeah, he's dropping it in. It's okay. But all the time, he's just running slightly out of position. He's still okay, but just a little bit closer to that middle pocket than he would have liked. But, well, everything going into the heart of the pocket at the moment. Yeah, this is uh, a big, big moment for Mark Davis, my word. I mean, obviously, 8-7 up is, is the first thing, but... This is something he would remember forever if he could make a maximum. OK, we're not at the Crucible, but this is still the World Championship. All eyes are on it. Uh, once again, just could have done with a, a few more inches on that cue ball, just further up the table. He would have been a bit straighter on one of these reds into the right corner and it would have had a better angle on the red into this left corner. So can play this maybe a little bit aside. Now, where is he going to play for the next red? Does he go right up the middle, just miss the pink? Give him some options. Oh, such a shame. Well, no maximum, but he's won the frame and 8-7, Mark Davis edges back in front. Table six, Louis Heathcote's just going 8-7 over Stuart Bingham, who, of course, missed on 41 when he was nicely in. So Bingham up against it there, having to get over that miss. And uh, we're now going to go to table three. This is uh, Jack Jones looking to... Of course, get the match won. They're back out after the interval 9-4 to Jack. Just to update the scores, because there's lots happening here. Obviously, Jack Lazowski's beaten Matthew Stevens 10-3. It's seven each, Robbie Williams over Chris Wakelin. And Wakelin needs a snooker on the pink there. So it's looking like 8-7 Williams. Seven each, Lou Haishan and uh, Jensen Kendrick. 9-6, Steve Maguire over Yuan Si Jun. 8-7, Heathcote over Bingham. 8-7 Davis over Walden, 8-6 Dominic Dale over her Kyu Chang. And this is all going to come to the boil over the next couple of hours. We'll have our first eight qualifiers for the Crucible. Well, what a tough part to be left here. OK tight against the ball cushion but a lot of distance between cue ball and red and doesn't know where the cue ball is going but he's got the pot that was the important thing and he may be just on this brown send us your tweets wherever you're watching this Whatever country you're in, far and wide. At David Hendon, at Rob Walker TV, and at Ken Doherty 1997. We'd love to hear from you. Loads of people commenting on the coverage, the excitement, on the drama as it unfolds, and the tension. Oh, 
eagerly watching it, watching it and seeing who's going to get through. Jack Lizowski, first man into the draw. Now this is table four, seven each, but Luhash and in for eight, seven against Jensen Kendrick. Kendrick led seven, six, but maybe now a little bit of experience. I mean, there's not much between them in terms of age, but in terms of qualifying for the Crucible, Lou Hyshen has done that three times. Of course, Kendrick looking to do it for the first. Thirty-five. Not too much more to do here. 36. Sixty-six in front, so any colour, and Kendrick needs a snooker. So looking like 8-7, barring a snooker. But uh, Steve Maguire, 9-6 up on Yuan Sijun. He's nicely in at the start of the next frame with a chance to get it won. Here we go. Can he bring it home and book a 20th crucible appearance. Well, you won't get a better chance than this. Plenty of loose reds. Yeah, he was 3-1 down early on, but that was early on. Oh, it's gone slightly wrong. Hold on. Trying to get through the gap there between red and the, a little bunch of four underneath the pink. So difficult pink to the right center if he's going to take it on. Very missable. Good recovery from Stephen Maguire. Very good shot, that. Missed the red. That's close to the right corner as well. 32. Back he's in prime position. He's kept a lid on things as well, hasn't he? You know, that kind of went wrong, but he just slightly reacted. There was no thump in the table or anything like that. Just keeping his cool 22. and looking pretty cool to get this one now. Be two pretty formidable first qualifiers, wouldn't they? Lazowski and Maguire. Yeah, Lazowski to play Trump in the first round and Maguire to pay Higgins. <laughs> Maybe some draws, wouldn't they? Oh, four good mates. These reds are just beautifully situated here. Didn't have to play any cannon, just play that. Was just a trifle of right hand side, just to widen the angle off the top cushion for this red into the right corner. And of course, when potting this red, the other two reds just above and to the right, if it will be available. So, well. You can't see him fail it from here. It's a good performance from Stephen Maguire. Yeah, yeah, back to back centuries at one point, and there's uh, just coped with the whole scenario really well. He missed out last year, so I was, was determined to get back this year. It's not been a good season, really, but the season's not over yet. Everyone wants to end it at the Crucible, and if he pots this red, that is what he will be doing. 
Stephen Maguire is in the hat for the first round of the World Championship. Ending on a high. He's won it in one visit. He hasn't stuttered over the winning line. 17. Yeah, and a nice way to do it, isn't it? In style, one visit, maybe finish with a century. We'd be absolutely delighted, Steve McGuire. Always going to be, well, a real test against this young, promising Chinese player. Wan Zijian, he's taken a few scalps in his fledging career. It's the man with more years and more years experience who's going to go into the hat on Taurus Day. That Rob will be conducting with Mark Allen. Yeah, and he's going to win it, it seems, with a century. There it is. Three in the match for Stephen Maguire. Experience telling. Another dangerous qualifier after Jack Lazowski also got through earlier tonight. Misses the yellow, it doesn't matter, the 100 will do. Stephen Maguire will be heading to the Crucible for the 20th time in his career in a few days' time. He's beaten Yuan Shijun by 10 frames to six. Now, Jack Jones is not far from joining him. Here we go, but uh, Zhou Yulong trying to pull this frame back. 9-4 down, oh dear, what's he done here? Well, that could be his last shot. That's pretty calamitous. You can see the red over the pocket. He's already 90, what is he, 29 in front. Yeah, it's a bit more one-sided maybe than we would have predicted. So Jack Jones with a chance, but we've just seen Steve Maguire complete an impressive victory, 10-6 over Yuan Sijun, ended it with a century. And so he is a very dangerous figure in the draw on Thursday morning. And here he is with Rob Walker. Stephen, you're still quite good at this game. No, just everybody else isn't that improving much. For three centuries, to get into a 20th Crucible campaign, you finished the match off in style there. Yeah, I finished with a century. I think I had a couple of centuries tonight. Uh, but uh, missing missing a lot of balls and, and I got away with it tonight. He, um, he, he missed just a wee bit more than me. Missing out last year, how desperate were you to come here and get back in that main draw again as you've just done? Uh, well, obviously, listen, you don't want to get beat any day, no matter where it is. Um, but losing in this place, it's, it's <laughs> you don't want to be here for a start. And when you do lose, it's uh, it's 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 hard to take. You had a couple of quarterfinals early on this season. Then you seem to go off the boil a little bit. But it looks the manner in which you've secured your twentieth cruiser. But it looks as though things are clicking again. Oh, listen, I don't know. Every day is different with me. I, I can play well one day and then look as if. I've never played the game, you know. Play well Monday, Tuesday's just a different day, so we'll just see. But what <laughs> we'll just see what happens down down at the Crucible. And where are you with with your latest cue? Are you, are you comfortable with your cue? I think Ken's got it somewhere. He's having a look at it. <laughs> uh, no, I like the cue. It's a good cue. It's uh, uh, Sonny Akani actually made it, and uh, it's it's a nice cue. Listen, cues has never been. I've never ever blamed cues. Uh, that's my own fault. But um, this one. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep it for a couple of months anyway. How, how long have you been working with that one? I've had it probably about a month. 
well i mean looking looking good on it and i guess and I, I know what a relaxed character you are you won't be bothered about the draw but i guess ken was just joking as i was hearing him commentate there with dave hendon you don't want to draw john in the in the first round you, you've no. you've had you've had to play anthony a couple of times yeah. you know in the first round it's a nightmare isn't it trying to no, play a mate i imagine no well listen i'm going to go back up and uh, i'd imagine john's in practicing so I, you know, I want games with John. I, I, I think he told me he's not playing to Tuesday. So if by chance I avoid him and, and, and get to maybe, you know, don't play to Monday, Sunday, Monday, then we can get a few games in. But if I draw him, I, I doubt we'll be playing each other or, you know, there'll be a bit of banner. <laughs> It'd just be a nightmare, actually. Yeah. Well, hopefully you will avoid each other and you can get some good practice in. Well done, Stephen. It'll be fantastic to have you back at the Crucible. Not many players. I think, Dave, what did you say? Is, is it 11 or maybe even 12 at the moment? Just over a dozen players have ever appeared at the Crucible 20 times. So you are an illustrious company. You're just saying I'm old, aren't you? That's what you're saying. <laughs> no, <laughs> talented and with great consistency. Okay. All right, cheers, Stephen. Thank you. I'll, cheers. I'll, uh, we'll, see who we, we'll see who we pull out the draw cheers, on bro. Thursday, quarter to nine in the morning. Thanks, Stephen. Yeah, well done to uh, Steve McGuire yeah. and uh, another another tough one for whoever draws him. And uh, if it is John Higgins, that's not ideal for the two of them. They like to no, practice together. No. Now then, we can show you table three. Jack Jones just on the brink of victory here over Zhou Yu Long. And that is another impressive qualifying campaign. And after last year, Ken... You don't want to draw him either. It uh, seems you don't want to draw what, anybody. That is an incredible performance because he was 4-2 down at one stage and he came back with a litany and a barrage of big breaks and uh, and he's playing a quality player. Zhu Yu Long knocking on the door to 16. Jack Jones, what an impressive performance. Quality. Yeah, he just seems to have a real calm about him in this World Championship. This is the event that's supposed to make everyone nervy, but he seems to come alive here. did last year, and he'll be back at the Crucible, where, of course, last year he beat Ali Carter and Neil Robertson and took Mark Allen very close indeed in the quarterfinals. So Jack Jones, our third qualifier for this year's World Championship, and he now is also talking to Rob. Thanks, Dave. Who could forget that nerveless run to the quarterfinals 12 months ago? And Jack Jones, you're back in it again. Yeah, yeah, really happy. Um, yeah, I'm happy with the way I played from 4-2 down. Um, so, yeah, feel good. F fantastic run of frames against yeah. a world-class opponent. And just as you demonstrated in qualification for the Crucible last year and on the big stage itself, you seem pretty calm out there, considering what's at stake and what a great opportunity was 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 hanging there. Mm. You, you closed the match beautifully. Yeah, um, I mean, I didn't feel calm. Um, well, I did feel really nervous in my in my first match and and in this match. Um, but I felt I felt quite calm this afternoon. Um, but I suppose all the practice I do practice quite hard. So um, when you feel nervous, then can uh, hold you in good stead and, and generally away from the table you do seem quite a calm character and, and that those personality traits must stand you in good stead when it does come to a pressure scenario where you know you've got to deliver um yeah i mean um i wouldn't say it's worked out like that so far in my career but um uh hopefully hopefully we'll come to it um yeah yeah i don't know and, and presumably you'll fear no one from the draw because of the, the fantastic manner in which you, you know, got yourself into the second week last year at the Crucible. You, you were one of the stories yeah. of the Crucible Championship from 2023 and, and presumably you'll, you'll, you'll relish the challenge again. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Um, it's probably just the longer formats. Um, you kind of, if you have a bad start, you can, you, you, you know, if you have a bad start, you can still get back into the match, which... Um, enables you to end up being a bit more calmer at the beginning of matches as well. So um, it's probably just the longer formats. Um, and uh, I haven't had a good season again, so uh, probably like lack of matches. Um, so when it comes to the world, you're playing a lot of frames, um, which kind of, yeah, it's just like match practice, really. Um, and uh, I mean, like the top 16, they play probably double the amount of tournaments of every other player um, on the tour. Um, so when you, I mean, I've played one match in the last two months. So when it comes to the world championship, um, long formats, you kind of gives you time to settle down. And, and you know what so many people say, an average season can become a great season 
if it takes you to the crucible and yours has yeah exactly yeah um yeah it can kind of like change your season um i i didn't have a great season last season before the world just kind of like saved the season um so here we are again um same same situation Will you will you bother watching the draw? Quarter to nine, Thursday morning, five live, and it's being streamed on the Red Button and the BBC Sport website. So no excuses. Three different ways you can watch, or will you just be eyes down and practice and you'll get a text from someone? Uh, no, I will watch it. I will watch it. I did the same last year. Um, probably watch it while I'm practicing. So, yeah, I'll be waiting for it. <laughs> Tremendous. Well, you've got to be in it Should to win. Fantastic performance. Should a run. second successive crucible for Jack Jones. We still haven't quite pinned down the nickname. What do you think, Henry? The Silent Assassin? I know we use that for Anthony McGill. Very calm around the table. Anyway, that's one to ponder. Back to you in the comms box. Yeah, thank you, uh, Rob. We're on the table seven here. Ricky Walden and Mark Davis. It's going to be uh, eight each. So, yeah, that's eight each. They're all close, including table six. Louis Heathcote is clearing up here to lead 9-7 against Stuart Bingham. Oh, what a frame. 60 behind, I think he was in this frame. Yeah, this is massive. Now, this is where you just got to keep your composure, try and control those nerves, that tension, the adrenaline, particularly in the back arm. Don't want to underscrew or overscrew this Brown. Oh, he's played it perfect. He's absolutely, or has he, has he gone a bit straight? He might have a slight angle just to get closer to the pink. No, he didn't. It's dead straight. So a little bit of hope for Stuart Bingham. It's not a, a gimme under this pressure circumstance. Needs to cue this nicely. Yeah. Just didn't get got too straight on the blue. Has he got away with it? I don't think so. Well, you called it, Ken. Massive shot. Massive pressure. And Stuart Bingham delighted to have a much easier pink for eight each. Wow, the drama of the World Championship qualified in a nutshell there. Incredible. Let's move on. Table four, Lou Haishan. Trying to go 9-7 up on Jensen Kendrick. 62 in front as we pick it up live. So this red and Kendrick needs a snooker, but you want to make sure here, we've seen a few frames twist and turn after this point. First things first, pop this. And that is what he's done. I can tell you Dominic Dale has just gone nine six up on her Gyu Chang. We'll get to that in due course to see if Dom can get them get the match won and put himself in the crucible for the first time in a decade. This is someone um, Rob maybe can speak to him later. He actually wrote his retirement letter a couple of years ago. He was, was going to send it off because he thought he was going to drop off tour. And uh, there was no need to buy a stamp because he stayed on and now I mean he's coming in actually today. He's up to forty in the world. Incredible. Incredible turnaround. And well played, Dominic Dale. What a character. 72. 79. So 9-7 it will be. <coughs> These matches 
They're all close. 8-7 to Robbie Williams against Chris Wakelin, but Wakelin is ahead in the next by 56 as we pick it up. There's 59 on, and, well, he's left a chance. I mean, it's not straightforward, this, but some sort of chance for Robbie Williams. Yeah, and I mean, well, highly unlikely he's going to try and well, win the frame from this position, but he'd be delighted to be back at the table. He can try and get the blue back on the spot here. What's he going to do? Yeah, get the blue. One. Get some points. It doesn't leave him a lot to play with because this will put him 50 points behind with only 51 remaining. But he's got a chance to knock the cue ball off three or four cushions back for these two reds near the black. Yeah, well, he played for the one just below the pink, but well, I'm not quite sure because now his angle on that red is not great and he cannot get on the black, which he needs. So what does he do? Does he maybe take one pink where he can possibly tie the frame? Or does he... Well, this is very dodgy. He's going to pot the red, try and bring the black out. But it could go wrong. Not a bad attempt, but well, how do you like these apples? Well, this is either goes in. If he misses it, it's frame over. Has it gone in? What a shot. Well, hats off to Robbie Williams there. Great shot had to go in otherwise frame was over gives him still a chance what sort of an angle has he got on this red can he pot the red and get onto the black I don't think the black pots into the right corner the red is in the way so he has to stun this red in get on the black into the left corner pocket not a lot of angle there Oh, well, I'll tell you what, Dave, you don't hit many better rest shots than that. That was just wonderful. Well, if he clears up at this visit, this is going to be one of the breaks of the tournament, bearing in mind the situation in the match. I tell you what, he's done so well just to get himself in, even into this position. From where the situation was when he came to the table. 23. Uh, look at this. How he's managed to take three reds with the three blacks. It's just incredible. Still a lot of work to do. Brown to blue <coughs> will be difficult. Blue to pink will be difficult. It's one of these situations your heart is racing now. You know how important this frame could be. We saw what happened to Louis Heathcote when he was 8-7, looking like he could go 9-7. Anything is missable. Now, this is where the problem starts. Very tight to that ball cushion. You have to be so accurate along that ball cushion. Very missable, particularly with a bit of pace trying to get up to the blue. Yeah, that was the issue. So a great effort to get that far, but he's left the brown for Wakelin, after all, to make it eight each. Yeah, such a difficult shot. And 
as I said, very missable. But he had to take it on. It's going to cost him, I feel. I don't see Chris missing this one. He's missed the blue, but snooker's Sorry. needed, two needed, so it's looking very much like eight apiece. Stuart Bingham, well, he made that, well, it was handy to him, I say, he made a great escape. The pink was handy to him, I guess, when Heathcote missed it. And Stuart Bingham in early here, looking ominous at the start of frame 17. far for the red that's on the extreme right of the bunch and not far enough for this red just below the pink so having to use the rest but oh, it's missable again the only good thing about playing this shot is that he'd be running he would expect back to ball so sort of might take a little bit of pressure off the shot playing the shot no and he's not gonna the only ready could leave is the ready takes on so it does take a bit of pressure, he's, and he's played it really well. Now, is he going to play into the... He's just going to play for the loose one. He's gone into the pack, and he's played it beautifully. Great shot, Stuart Bingham. He's going to go 9-8 up, you will feel now. Six. Could have gone 9-7 down. That missed pink from Lewis, Louis Heathcote. Just massive, wasn't it? Oh, that was... 57. Yeah, just not getting the right side of the blue. Just dead straight on the blue. A little bit of adrenaline. To get Hitting the brown too hard. Having to leave the pink mid-distance as opposed to being right behind it. And, well, he's going to go 9-8 down now from... Should have been 9-7 up. Yeah, and of course it's not just about one shot for Lee, Louis Heathcote, it's four rounds he's ploughed through, well this is the fourth round, but in the end that pink, we'll see, he's not lost yet, but massive body blow obviously, and Bingham, you can just see the spring in his step here, so this black is frame ball, and it's going to be 9-8 to the 2015 champion, there's the round of applause. So he's won that frame. Let's go to table four because Lou Hyshen is trying to get the match won against Jensen Kendrick, another player who's come from round one. But will he get back to the table now is the question. <coughs> and the answer is yes. And he's left this red into this left corner. And this, yeah, he can stun down for the black, but oh, when you're 9 7 down, he could be one shot away from well, being out. So lots of pressure on this shot. You've got to cue this so sweetly. Very missable. Oh, well played. Didn't hold the cue ball, though. Yeah. Disappointed. Lost the cue ball trying to get on that black. Yeah, you can see the disappointment. The, the irony is for Kendrick, he's played his best snooker of his two-year time on the World Snooker Tour right at the end of the card. He needs to win this match to get another one. Otherwise, it's back to Q school. So he's sort of a double whammy for him. Obviously, he wants to play at the Crucible, but he wants to stay on tour as well. 
table seven. Just see Mark Davis going nine eight up. So we're just going to uh, leave this for the moment. Bingham made a century, by the way, but this is Mark Davis looking good for 9-8 over Ricky Walden. It would mean a lot for Mark to qualify after last year, what happened <coughs> when he lost 10-9 on the black. He missed the pink to win against Joe Perry in the decider. Yeah, what a match that was. Uh, I tell you what, what a match this is between the two of them. We always thought it was going to be close, but uh, yeah. This could still go right to the wire, but Mark Davis going to have... Oh, first chance at it. He's going to go 9-8. One up with two to play. Always a nice position, but you never get carried away with it. Things can change very quickly, but he's playing really, really well. Had that maximum intent. Looks so good. Looks very confident. Good cue ball. Yeah, it's the fluency that's impressive, isn't it? It's not sort of, you know, stuttering at all. It's, mm. it's just getting on with it. Yeah, making good breaks. Now, table eight, Dominic Dale, another veteran, another 50-something like Mark Davis, trying to get back to the crucible. Here he is, Dominic, he's in here, nine six up. He's trailing in the frame, but he's at the table. 135 from Stuart Bingham, by the way. Terrific stuff from him. 9 8 over Heathcote. Such great snooker being played here. Eight. Yeah, once again, Dominic, just to be delighted to be back at the table and try and, well, eat into that lead Guo Chang has. Just had a quick look. I think the bottom red of the two that are close together, I think that will pot into the left corner pocket. So, okay. Play for the pink here. Pink or black, but I'd say you play for pink. And had another look at that red. Century for Mark Davis. We were just watching that break. He's gone on to, uh, to make the ton. Nice little cannon and potting this red onto the other red. Don't knock it too far away. You don't want to knock it close to the cushion. Just a delicate little cannon. Yeah. And now when potting this pink, leave a nice angle on the the next red. So we could bring the red out of play. The one that's closest to the left middle. And it's got that angle. Yeah, we're coming up to the key moment for Dominic Dell, 52 years of age. Well, decided not to take the red out. So he's going to rely on a double, I think. Obviously, the fact that he's so far behind that he needs the points that if took a red out with a red that if he didn't get on the colour he'd be in trouble so yeah. playing for this double into the right centre where his hand is a back cross double he'd be nicely on the black oh is it there no so maybe the choice of not taking the red out with the red he had a nice angle maybe that's going to cost him we'll see when his next chance comes. Uh, Yu Chang, first season professional, he's had such a good year. And that's such a good pot. Needs to run. Yeah, so chance for 9-7. Uh, 
like I say, Dominic's had a chance, but he's going to have to do it in the next frame now. This green is for the frame. In it goes. So 9-7. And the action hotting up again on table four. Lou Hyshen in again, looking to get it won. 10-7 against Jensen Kendrick, who's had such a good run at these qualifiers. Credit to the way he's produced the goods, but it may be the run's about to end. Yeah, it looks it, doesn't it? And that's unfortunate for Jensen Kendrick. What a wonderful story. What a great run. Had some chances as well. Oh, well. Commentator's course. That pink. And another couple of reds, and it was all over. So, Jensen, what's left in the tank? You've been throwing a lifeline here. Can you take it? Well, that's incredible, really. As I, s I said earlier, you know, things are kind of happening for Jensen Kendrick, and they're still happening there. It looked over. I'm sure he thought that. 39, be so, uh, 39 behind. 37 behind, even. 59 available. That's a great shot. That is a wonderful shot. A brave shot to take on as well. Potting the red, knocking the other red into play. Thirty points, the difference. Seven. One safe red. Now, I'm not quite sure what he he wants. He wants to pot this red and take the other red off, but maybe. Well, he's going for it. Looks like he's going pretty low on the cue ball, so he may try and take the red off the cushion. Look at this for a shot. The only problem is, it's oh, he's unlucky. He is unlucky, just a little bit too hard. And he's left himself a difficult black. And that's the problem about taking reds off cushions with another red, that if you don't get the right connection, the cue ball can stay very close to the cushion. This is a must to go in, you would feel. It's very missable. Very missable. So just to reiterate, Jack Lazowski, Steve McGraw and Jack Jones have already qualified. Mark Davis, Stuart Bingham and Lou Haishan here and Dominic Dale all one frame away. Eight each, Robbie Williams and Chris Wakelin in the remaining matches. That's a terrific pot. Bear in mind the pink he missed. If he can clip the black in, he'd be 37 in front with 35 on. But it's... Uh, he's had a look at it. He's having another look at it. Well, it is potable, but it's a very, very fine cut. Could miss it altogether. Oh, well played. Good pot. And maybe oh, Jensen Kendrick's race is run. Needs one four point snooker now. His head is bowed, and you feel a bit sorry for him. It's been a wonderful. Week from some great matches. He's played well in this match. Just a few shots here and there have cost him. Now he needs one four point snooker. Could pot red and black here. Keep himself alive. Not over just yet, but back firmly against the wall.
OK, we'll just leave this for now. He's playing for the snooker course, but uh, Stuart Bingham has got a chance to get it won, and that missed pink from Heathcote for 9-7. I mean, it looked big at the time, but now... Well, it's the key shot of the match, isn't it? It's turned the match in Bingham's favour, and he, uh, he looked confident in the last frame. He made 1-3-5, and now another great chance. Black on its spot, red's available for Stuart Bingham to book his place at the Crucible, and an 18th appearance at our most celebrated venue, of course, where he won the title in 2015. Been a difficult season for Stuart. We've not seen much of him, just one quarter final at the Scottish Open, but it could end on a high. Yeah, play for blue here. Back into the same pocket. 32. And red, just above the pink, will pot into the left corner. He's just coming around to have a look at that. He's such a good scorer, Stuart Bing. I'm on his day. I mean, he can mix it with the best. Then. I don't know what his record of 147s in tournament play, but it's right up there. Oh, wow. I think it's gone too far for the black. Just stunned it too much. He's going to take this pink on. <laughs> Doesn't like the pink, too risky. If he pots the pink and gets a nice can on the red just above it, well, it's frame match over. Well, it was a pink that turned the match in his favour, of course, the missed pink from Heathcote. And Stuart Bingham knocks that one in. Still work to do, though, clearly. <coughs> yeah, played it. Very cleverly. She missed it. Look where the cue ball was finishing. Oh, that's a good... That is a really good part. And if he gets a nice kiss on the green... And he has done. So, good shot from Shaw Bingham. He pots this brown, guaranteed to be on one of these reds around the pink. <laughs> and that could be it. Yeah, well played, Stuart sure, Bingham. From... 49. The grips of almost being 9-7 behind. Miss pink from Louis Heathcote. Bingham. Equalised at eight or had a wonderful one three five to go nine eight and now these and this is good stuff. This is what great champions do. Back to the wall, produce great snooker. Yeah, that's the thing. Another player, he's played well to qualify. You know, it's not not just been scrapping out frames. This he's had. Uh, two centuries already and this could be another so that's very impressive there's quite a few other big breaks as well along the way and so he'll go to the crucible i'm sure feeling confident not just happy to be there but confident that a bit of form has returned in our biggest event and now he can relax he's over the line just one of the great enthusiasts for the sports Stuart bingham loves to play in every tournament and will have been gutted missing a few this season, watching the others battle it out. In fact, he had a little goat pool in China. But snooker is his first love, and he will be at that great venue where he won the title in 2015. And at the risk of repeating myself, it's another tough draw for the seats. It's a former winner. 
Yeah. Louis, big coat on there on the waistcoat already. He'd be disappointed. He had a great chance. That pink was the turning point. The handshake will surely come. Well done. Yeah, Louis Heathcote did brilliantly to come from round one. Just one shot in the end turned it. The pink he missed to lead 9-7. Stuart Bingham finished strongly. Breaks a 1-3-5 and 71. We'll hear from him shortly, but here's a the winner there by 10 frames to eight. Now, uh, while we were watching that table four as well, we saw Lou Hyerson get to the snooker's required stage against Jensen Kendrick, another player who had a great run. We'll catch up with that later, but uh, this is table eight. Dominic Dale had the chance to win 10 6. Of course, it's 9 7, 24 in front in this next frame. Still 9 8, Mark Davis over Ricky Walden, 8 each, Robbie Williams and Chris Wakelin. <laughs> Okay, let's just jump into table two because Chris Wakelin has a chance here to nick this frame and go 9 8 up. There's been a lot of close frames between these two. Robbie Williams had the chance in the last, of course. Missed that tough brown along the bulk cushion. It's all coming to the boil. We've got four players already qualified. In fact, we've got five already qualified, and, every, and the other three all very close. So, well, he's done well here. 52. To get as close to the yellow as he could. Another big shot on the green. We'll be with Stuart Bingham shortly, but let's just see if Wakelin can make this clearance because it's a big moment in this match. Oh. Great shot. 57. Well, that was a wonderful shot. Well, the black to yellow, yellow. Screwing down and then that green. Wow, what a clearance this is. Yeah, these are the breaks that make the big differences in matches. Got to remember the blues on the, on the pink spot. This Blue and pink. Yeah, big deep breaths from Chris Wakelin. What a clearance. Blue and pink required. Oh, this will hurt Robbie Williams. He had a great chance. Led by 50 yard. But, well, this clearance is top drawer. Another close frame. A great clearance. 72 from Chris Wakelin. So he leads 9 8. Let's hear from our latest winner, though, Stuart Bingham. Former champion is with Rob Walker. Thanks very much, Dave. And Stuart is in the draw once again. Massive comeback, 7-3 down against Stuart Carrington. And how big was Louis' miss on the pink for 9-7? Turn the match. Yeah, massive. Um, didn't really do a lot wrong um, tonight, really. Um, just couldn't get my nose in front. Um, but, yeah, um, obviously five... What was our two new up? Two all... F um, Three two up should have gone four two. Missed a couple of balls. Um, concentration sort of slipped a bit, but uh, went five three down. Big massive frame to go five four, and then come out. Obviously nice hundred to start the night off with. And I think I played near enough, near enough close to perfect snooker. I was two two. Um, he just had a couple of little nudges here and there, and uh, it just obviously won in the sort of the two frames uh, seven six down. But um, yeah, massive obviously pink. He's he's missed there. Uh, to go 9-7, obviously a different story. He might not be standing here. And a great way for you to have finished the match. Your big break building is still intact. Yeah, it ain't been obviously all season, so I, I don't know what's happened. Um, trying to sort of clear my head away from the table. Um, but uh, got a few things still on. But um, yeah, obviously, I don't feel like I've played that bad this season. I've just come up against players like 
Lewis and, and Stuart Carrington that have just played really well. And uh, I've just come off, obviously, come out second. Um, but obviously, I, I, I somehow held myself together here and, and coming back here this weekend or, or next week. And, and all credit to you for, for digging yourself out of that hole against Carrington. And, and looking at your season, it has been strange because in terms of ranking events, incredibly, you hadn't won a ranking event match so far this calendar year in 24 until you beat Stuart. It, you know, it's it's been, a, it's been a tough old few months for you, hasn't it? Yeah, I think we only had two events. <laughs> so, uh, obviously, um, I, I remember losing... 5-3 to Ishprit uh, in the qualifying for the World Open and then lost 4-1 to Marco. Um, just obviously mine weren't there, so a few things off the table. But um, yeah, I had a sort of near enough eight weeks off. I had the Championship League finals group in between. Um, dabbled in the old Chinese hayball over in China, come back, put got me head down and uh, sort of had, had some good practice coming here. Played uh, Mark Davis, uh, Barry Hawkins and Kyron. So I uh, come here, felt really good and got my rewards. So does it feel as though you've kind of been reinvigorated just for this business end of the season? A little break, you know, have a go at the pool. I mean, look look what Mark Williams did after after he came back from playing pool. He, you know, he, he produced that marvellous comeback when, when it looked like Tom Ford was going to beat him. And then he goes on and wins seven on the spin against Ronnie and picks up the, the Tour Champs title. Did you feel similarly revived after after going over there and having a, a different Q sport? Um, I, I think just obviously just, yeah, it was just something different. Um, took, I don't know how Mark done it. It took me maybe probably two or three days to get back to normal size balls and a big table uh, and obviously a normal size queue really. Um, but obviously the Chinese hay ball is like the nine ball uh, size balls um, and I was playing with a bigger tip. So yeah, it took me two or three days to sort of get my timing back. But once it did, it started playing well and uh, yeah, I'm in the draw. You are, and I can tell. Listen, I can <laughs> tell it's your your 18th crucible, your 14th on the spin. So even though you have been there, you know, not not far off 20 times now, will you bother watching us doing the draw? Quarter to nine Thursday, don't miss it. Five live on the red button and on the BBC Sport website. Will you will you watch, or will you just wait for a mate to send you a text? Um, I'm sure if I wake up in time, um, I'm 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 going to sort of go home now, um, chatted. So. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure I'll be watching a little bit tomorrow, hearing you on the commentary, um, seeing everyone else twitch up. And then, uh, yeah, maybe probably tune in, see the draw. Um, obviously, don't care. Obviously, everyone wants to miss Ronnie. Um, but uh, yeah, obviously, I'm, I'm just happy to, with the seas couple of seasons I've had, it's, it's nice to finish this season off at the uh, at the Crucible. You've shown some real class and composure in these two matches. Well done, Stuart. I can't wait to see who you get in the draw Thursday morning. Well done, mate. Cheers, You'll bro. be on the big stage. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah, well done, Stuart. And uh, also well done to Lou Haishan. He's beaten J Jensen Kendrick 10-7. And so he will also be in that draw come Thursday morning. Now, table seven, Ricky Walden is levelling up at nine each with Mark Davis. So that's going to be, we thought we'd get a decider and we're about to have it. You can see they're 34 in front, 22 on. So Mark Davis puts his cue on the table and we will be back to see that one through. Our first decider. Yeah. You can't beat it, can you? Mark oh. Davis had one last year, of course. I'm sure memories will be coming flooding back. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh. Gu Chang we could here. have a couple more. We could have a couple more. Trying to force one with Dominic. <laughs> Firstly, he's got to make it 9-8, and he's got the chance to do that here. Yeah, reds are lovely, aren't they? Been very impressed with this young man. I know he's having a terrific debut season. But I've been very impressed seeing some of his matches here this week and just his whole demeanor, composure, confidence. Got good cue action, quite compact. Not sure about the glove, but other than that, everything is good.
And just in case you're worried, and it's not because his hands are cold, it's just that he feels that by wearing a glove, the cue goes through nice and smooth along the the texture of the glove. So seems to be working for him. Now, can he get on one of these reds into the left center? Yes, he can. So looking like he's going to go 9-8 here, Dave. Yeah, well, at 9-6, Dominic Dale had a choice to make, didn't he? Could have brought the red out, played for the double. Had he got it, it was on the black. It's probably match over, but he didn't. Here we are. It's getting a little bit sticky for Dominic. Yeah, I think playing the shot, taking the red out with the red would have been the better shot. Mm. May rue that. So... 30 in front with uh, 35 on this red is frame ball for 9 8. I've just watched on the, the monitor there on table seven Ricky Wall and Mark Davis. Mark Davis has broke off, Dave. And uh, he's left the cue ball short. The red has come up and left Ricky Wald in first chance in that final frame. Yeah, well, let's get over there, Ken, because uh, it's one more frame to be played. Ricky Walden, who lost in a decider last year at the Crucible to Luca Purcell. That was round one. Maybe that was the least talked about match uh, for Luca, but, of course, a very significant one getting through it. And of course, Mark Davis, we keep saying it, but lost in this round on the black to Joe Perry. Needs to slow down. Oh, it's Six. gone wrong. Adrenaline. Yeah, Walden also had a decider at this stage last year. He beat Tepchar and new 10 9. So it was a chance, but didn't come to much. Let's go over to table two because Robbie Williams is back in. It's 9 8 to Chris Wakeland. Robbie Williams back in after losing that poor frame. But a wonderful clearance from Chris Wakeland. Let's go over and let's see what's happening. It's on a 41 point lead. Are we going to have another 10 9 over here as well? Well, we could end the night with three, couldn't we? Because uh, it's 9-8 to Dale. As we know, 9 all Walden and Davis. And as you say, chance here for Williams. Remember, uh, uh, to come along, there's only one day left. It's £12 for a day ticket. It's the absolute bargain of a lifetime, isn't it? Yeah. The amount of snooker you see. And funny you should say that, because a lot of the people that I was talking to outside, you know, a lot of the, the crowd saying, wow, what a, what a great bargain this is. £12 all day. See all this great snooker, great matches unfold, great drama, great tension, great excitement. And all for £12. Great value. I think they were paying £12 not to watch me the other day, though. Trying to get out. <laughs> Had to lock them in. Could have given them a discount, maybe. <laughs> Impressive stuff from Robbie Williams here. It really is. Would have been devastated to lose that close frame. Another nice little shot there. Just a little cannon promoting that red towards the left corner pocket.
I think the black will still pot into that right corner, so not much work to do with the cue ball. Yeah, so the black to lead by 65, 75 on. So another red and a colour. Three pots, essentially, for nine each. Now, this black is in the way <laughs> of the red to right corner. So it's going to be a more difficult one. He's not over the line yet. He's got the one to the green pocket. But was looking at this stage for an easier pot than this. With the danger of another Chris Wakeling clearance. We saw him in the last frame do exactly that. Massive shot for Robbie Williams, this. No. He was on the walk, so not there yet. Nothing potted in frame 18 with Dale and her, and uh, still a six-point lead for Ricky Walden. Nothing's been potted since we saw that one in the decider. We will be over there shortly, of course, but this is at a very delicate stage as well. Yeah, just didn't get on the red as intended and didn't really get close, let's be honest, to that red that he took on. Might be a chance for Chris Wakeland to dislodge these two reds that are on this top cushion. Play one into the other and try and knock them up the table. Keeping that white still close to the cushion as possible. No, it doesn't like it. Be careful here, Robbie Williams. Just keep the red safe also, but blocking that red up into the bulk area. Oh yeah, good shot. Okay, well, this frame, we're going to take a bit of working out. We don't want to go too far from the decider, Mark Davis, Ricky Walden. There's nothing been potted since we were with it. Looking for a good cue ball here, which he's got. Nicely done. Reds spread far and wide now, so next chance could be a good one for whoever gets in. Yeah, good aggressive safety shot there for Mark Davis. Path blocked down the left-hand side. 
may have to just play a containing safety shot, leave the cue ball, yeah, somewhere near where his cue is, tight to this top cushion. But he's got to be careful because Red's available into the right corner, into the right center. Very dangerous. Okay, well, there was a little standoff on table two, but Chris Wakelin has broken that. Well, <laughs> trying to do the maths, I think, here. That's the problem. All the reds are near small colours, and he's 59 behind. <coughs> Yeah, and he doesn't have an angle, really, to stay on the blue on this red. So what's he going to play for here? Playing for the brown. Could have played that a little bit better. He's going to have to use the rest. He could pot the green, but then that reduces the possibility by an extra point. So the brown is more favorable this will put him 54 points behind with just 59 on the table so he's only got four points really to play with so we may see him with this red might have to come down for black here black or pink Hello. he's got a nice angle on the red so anywhere down but he's got to get a high color from this red Black or pink, he could play for the blue. But I think black or pink it is better choice. Here we go. Gotta miss the brown. Oh, this is way too hard. It could be in no man's land here. What a terrible shot. Let's end a break. Yeah, he just unless he knocks the blue in, but that was a terrible shot. He seemed to get in his head about the scores. He was sort of struggling to work them out. He could take the green, he'd be fifty behind with fifty one on. So still not out of it, but it's it's an uphill battle here for Wakeland. where the reds are, and obviously if he pots the green, he would need blacks. So he could take the blue for a couple of extra points. Needs to pot it, though, otherwise he needs a snooker. Great shot. Well, he made a great clearance in the last frame. This would top that one if he were to clear it from here. Well, that is just a wonderful recovery shot. And he's got a nice angle on this red, left of the green. Could possibly get down for blue or pink again. 48, the difference. Because he needs blue or above. He's gone down for the, oh, it's gone wrong again. <laughs> Tried to get down for the black actually at that pace with that full ball kiss on the blue. Well, that's just disaster. Another ne great yeah. recovery shot needed. Not easy, is it, with the rest? He's like walking on a tightrope <laughs> in the wind. Yeah. No. Not there. So 
Snooker's needed, but uh, table seven, they're in the decider. Mark Davis went for a red, he missed it. Ricky Walden has a chance here. Well, here's the choice. If he's dead straight on this brown, it's a straightforward shot, screw back. I mean, uh, I'd like to keep that red over the yellow pocket as long as possible. And if he's, if he's dead straight on the brown, he could screw back off the cushion for one of those reds, just beneath the pink. Now, the only problem about taking the red here is that it's difficult to judge when the it's so close to the corner pocket oh he's played this really well well he couldn't have played that any better and now he's got a lovely angle on the blue he can play for one of those two reds around the pink particularly ideally he'd like to get on the red it's just on the pink spot No, he's played for the one left of it. He's still in good position. Pink available, black is available. And, of course, plenty of loose reds available. Great chance for Ricky Walden. Won 10-9 in this round last year against Tep Jar and Newt. Well, <laughs> could be better, couldn't it? just caught that red and hasn't quite come through as intended yeah and a bit of traffic to miss here he's got to miss the red below the black he's got to miss the red to the right of the black try and screw it off through the gap off two cushions oh good shot yeah very good recovery didn't sort of make a meal of that did he just played it and he's back in business Walden attempting to reach the crucible for a tenth time. He was a semi finalist back in 2013. We well, got through that lovely. Yeah. What's his next choice? Play for the red to the right of the pink. Does he play a little cannon into the two reds? Uh, close, just below the pink. He's going to play for the loose red. I'd like to be playing for black here. If he's got the, if he's nice and straight on this red, I think if he plays for black, of course that would make his job easier. Particularly those two reds around the black after this shot. No, sell for the pink. So obviously the left red of the two that are close together goes into this left corner pocket. Taking these very nicely so far, Ricky Walden. I can tell you Dominic Dale's also in. He's 19-14 uh, in front. 9-8 up, of course, trying to get that one. And still, the, the snookers, uh, Chris Wakelin playing for snookers against Robbie Williams. But it's looking like 9-all in that one. Yeah, made sure he left a nice angle on the blue. In and out of bulk, the fact that the yellow's off the spot makes this shot a little bit easier. Playing for the red, just to the left of the pink. And he's on it, lovely. Nice control. Just to confirm, it is 9 all Chris Wakelin and Robbie Williams.
Well, it wasn't one of his best. A little bit of nervousness maybe in that one. Getting closer and closer to the winning line, but still needs a couple of reds here. First real difficult red here. Playing this with a little bit of right hand side, trying to uh, hold for pink or black. Yeah, always miss the ball. But he's okay, he's played it in such a way that He's always got to get the cover with black and, and, of course, those two reds if he missed it. And that's exactly what's happened. I can tell you Dominic does missed leading by uh, 42 points to 40. Missed a red 9-8 in front, but finding it difficult to get that match won. It was 9-6. They just, just started the decider, Wakelin and Williams. Can he see the red? If he can, that's a massive error. I think there is a gap, you know. The way he walked by, back to his chair, I think he's left the gap. And he's just playing almost a sort of nothing shot yeah. there, sort of roll up, but that is a massive error if he's left the gap. <laughs> Must be pretty tight. He's got to be careful because if he has to swerve around it, these clots are so reactive. He could go into the black there. And that's what he's fearful of. Well, wasn't on it. Didn't like it. We're going to just jump to table eight because her Chang here has a chance for nine each. Dominic Dell, Mr. Red. And uh, this first season professional refusing to go away. Still got a bit of work to do. That red is close to the left hand side cushion. It's not going to be straightforward. How does he attack it? Does he play for pink here? has played for pink mm, could have done with that cue ball just another inch or so away from the cushion so he could have held for the red a little bit better yeah he's having to hit down on it anything is missable in situations like this Well, he's played it well, but couldn't get as close as he would have liked. He wanted to be straighter on this red or a slight angle going towards the black. Now he's got to put his trust in this shot. This is a well, this is gonna either 
keep him in this world championship or it could cost him it. Because if he misses it, he's bound to leave the red on. Because he's going to play it. I would suggest that he plays it. Slow pace. He's got a better chance if he plays it slow pace. But if he's screwing it in, he could miss this even more. This is very missable playing it with pace. Wrong way to play it for me. Should have dropped it in. Just dead way. Give it a chance to get into the pocket. Hedging his bets. And it hasn't. Worked out in his favor. Chance for Dominic Dale now. Could have been easier, but the match could have been over. Or, sorry, the, fr <laughs> the frame could have been over. Slightly less pressure on Dominic here because the cue ball is running up into a safe area, up in the bulk area. But he still missed it. Has he got cover? I think he has. I think he's got a snooker. May be able to see an edge. Well, he's been fortunate there, Dominic Dale. Just got an edge, but has to get the right connection, otherwise he could stick it up again. Not bad, but Dominic has a free shot at it. And in it goes. Now, how about the cue ball? Nah, just landed in no man's land. Just gets on a colour there, surely wins. Oh, he's not going to attempt the, the green into the right centre, but he can use the brown here. Get that cue ball down here, somewhere down behind the pink. Use the the brown as the blocking ball, and he could lay a really good snooker here. Okay, well, it's happening on all tables. We go back to table seven. There's been a bit of a standoff there. Ricky Walden, of course, was, had a good lead. He's just potted a red, so he's 51 in front, 58 with that black. Still needs another red. So this is the ball, but as we've seen all sorts of drama already. Ball's missed unexpectedly. Robbie Williams, I can tell you, is 40 nil up in the decider against Chris Wakelin. We'll try and get over there as well, but this is match ball effectively for Ricky Walden. Just a little bit conscious of the in-off. That's why he's digging down on the cue ball. Avoid the middle pocket. He's missed it. Oh, has he knocked the blue in? He could knock the blue in here. Oh! Wow. Oh. Oh. you believe it? 58 points in the lead. 59 left on the table. He's knocked the blue in. And he's put himself in all sorts of trouble here. OK, well, let's go to table two meantime, because Robbie Williams has got a golden chance. He's 48 in front. And he's got the balls where you want them. Here we go. Look at this. To get back to the cruise ball for the first time in eight years, at the expense of Chris Wakelin. 
Well, this is an unbelievable turnaround. When he went 9-8 down, that clearance from Chris Wakelin from nowhere. Guitar, maybe. It was over for Robbie Williams, but he dug in. Made a decent break in the, in the last. It was nip and tuck. Wakelin ran out of, well, ran out of points, basically. Try and win a 10-8, but have a look at this. What a position for Robbie Williams here. 63 62. points in the lead. One red and a high-value colour. And Chris Wakelin will need a snooker. Could go up for blue here. Could stay on the black. I can tell you, Ken, the three times he's qualified, in each time in the <laughs> final round, he won 10-9. <laughs> so it's going to be four deciders. That is incredible. Here we go. This is the ball. Yeah, if he gets on the red as well. Make sure the black. Great shot. Well, well played, Robbie Williams. Chris Wakelin will be absolutely devastated. He's not at the Crucible. He's had a couple of good seasons. Moved right up the rankings. He would, he would have been a big favourite to win in this match, but Robbie Williams has played superb stuff. Well, meanwhile, Dominic Dale has broken the deadlock in that frame. He's on the blue here, looking to get this one. Here it is. He needs blue, pink and black, and he'll be back at the Crucible for the first time in 10 years. He was down to commentate for Eurosport, but that'll have to wait a while. He's going to be playing if he pots these two. Fergal will be drafted in. <laughs> Fearless Fergal. He'll be hoping Dominic Dale pots this black. Well, what a result if he does. Well done, Dominic. Yeah, he's been given stiff opposition by his young opponent. We'll see plenty more of him in the future, guaranteed. But there it is. That's the winning ball for Dominic Dale. 10-8. He beats Her Q Chen to qualify for the World Championship final stages for the first time in a decade. Chris Wakelin's going to play on for snookers, but he needs a lot. He needs a lot of snookers. 79 behind 59 on, just can't quite bring himself to concede. So let's go to table seven. That's the one where it's still very much up for grabs. And this is the position. Ricky Walden, 53 in front, 59 on. So he still needs one red, but he's finding it hard to just get over that winning line. Yeah, and he's got a bit of insurance. I mean, the yellow, the two reds that are tied up, but it doesn't take much for it to turn around. Ricky Walden will be well aware of that. He was in a, uh, I wouldn't say an unassailable position, but certainly a very a stronger position until he knocked that blue in. Good shot for Mark Davis. Okay, he's got the cue ball tight to this ball cushion. But this red is potable. And he can avoid the black. So he's playing it. An element of safety, cue ball back up into the ball area. But uh, these are so tough, particularly with everything that's at stake. Oh, he's missed it. How's the cue ball? It's going to go behind the green. He's got the second part right, has he? He has. OK, well, this is still in the balance, but Dominic Dale has qualified. He's with Rob. Yeah, first time in 10 years that he's made it to the Crucible and uh, really stood up to the pressure well in the end to get over the line. His opponent coming back at him. And this was the winning ball for Dominic Dale. Terrific stuff. Over to you, Rob. Dominic.
That's unbelievable. You're back at the Crucible for the first time in 10 years. And what a way to do it. Astonished, actually. Uh, I should probably walk back to the hotel and try to take it all in because I was 9-6 up, I think, and I had a couple of golden chances. I didn't feel nervous, but it's been so long since I played a, a match of that magnitude, not necessarily financially, but to get back to the Crucible. I, ne I never thought, I couldn't have dreamt at my age I could ever play well enough to get there having have you know you've got to play so many matches to qualify now and i, I sometimes wonder if i'm capable enough but uh, luckily tonight i was ah, it's, it's an amazing story it really is especially when you think you made your crucible debut i think back in 1997 and and you're back you're the oldest qualifier since steve davis marched to the quarterfinals in 2010 so a little slice of history for you there spaceman good heavens well i'll tell you i'll, I'll take uh, i'll take a quarter final i've been to two of them but uh, i'm look <laughs> hoping i mean wouldn't it be a great thing if I drew Rob Milkins? That's all I can say. Well, I mean, listen, there's, there's, the, the draw is going to be fascinating for so many different reasons. And I joked with Ken Doherty before the coverage started uh, at the beginning of Judgment Day Part 1, you are a man who always plays better snooker when you're in love. This French girlfriend of yours has reinvigorated your career and the fact that the future father-in-law is always talking to you about snooker because he's a big fan. You look like a man with a Hang spring on. in his step. Hang on a minute. Future father-in-law? What's that about? Uh, <laughs> well, um, come on. You've got 20 grand to spend now or maybe even 30 if you make the last 16 or well, more it, if you make the quarters. Well, yes, you could be right. I mean, I should be trying, obviously. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, Anne has made a big difference in my life because... Um, for the last four or five years, I've been content with playing an hour and a half a day, something like that, and travelling to tournaments. I love the commentary and the studio work that I do. Um, I shall miss it greatly. Um, I think Dave Hender's commentating back there. I mean, he's, he's going to have to find somebody else now. Um, yeah, uh, he said he'll manage it. Don't <laughs> worry. There you go. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously, yeah, I mean, Anna has made a difference because uh, her, uh, her dad, who lives in France, uh, Jean, he loves watching uh, Eurosports coverage of the snooker, and he always watches it. And before she met me, he didn't really know what a snooker ball was. And uh, she knows all about the game now, and she's followed my career. And, and between Anne and, and her father, Jean, um, they want me to practice more, and I've done that this season. And uh, I'm surprised that it's actually paid off, because I've only done a little bit more, two and a half to three hours a day. But there's been more focus there, more purpose when I play matches. And I've turned up at a tournament wanting to win first rounds rather than sort of, well, you know, a bit, bit sort of come see, come saw, sort of if I win, great, if I don't, you know, I've always got my commentary work and I don't necessarily enjoy practicing anymore and that's the thing. So if you don't enjoy the practice and you don't put those hard uh, hours in, you know, you can never expect too much of yourself and uh, I'm surprised I've done so well this season, I really have. And, and it's been great to watch, you know, you had a deep run at the Welsh, made it made it to the, to the quarterfinals, you know what's going to happen now. You've got to get Jean. If he is, if he is a big snooker fan, you've got to get him a ticket for the cruise. Well, I don't. I mean, he's retired. You never know, do you? Uh, <laughs> I haven't thought that far yet, Rob. In all honesty, um, I don't know when I'll be playing. I've got to wait for the draw now, and um, I hope I play Rob Milkins. That would be hilarious. Well, it, it would be uh, incredible. And uh, Dave Hendon's gutted because apparently the Eurosport commentary wrote is now going to have to be uh, ripped to pieces. Just finally, quickly, would you opt? to commentate if you were not playing on that specific day or will you not take any media duties until such time as you may or may not be knocked out of the tournament? Um, no, I mean, if I was playing on the Tuesday, I'd be very happy to commentate for a few days before. It doesn't bother me. I mean, I, I, it's not as I'm, uh, I'm doing sort of ex exertion, you know, with exercise or anything like that. I mean, I'm in a commentary box. I'm focused on the snooker. I'm watching snooker. It's all pretty pleasant, calm and serene and all of that, you know. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not... Uh, I don't. Uh, the travelling to Sheffield, for, you know, it isn't isn't too difficult on the train. It's simple enough, and I'll see what the commentary rotor uh, looks like when I get it. Um, maybe they'll replace me entirely. I'd be devastated if they do, but we'll see. Well, listen, the language of international love—a French girlfriend, a French <laughs> future father-in-law, and he's back at the Cruise for the first time in ten years. Well done, Dominic. Thank we you. We'll see you in the big draw on Thursday. Yes. When is the draw, by the way? Quarter to nine Thursday morning, five live. Don't miss it. Oh, goodness me. Five live. Oh, there you go. I'll be home in bed and I'll listen to it and uh, be crossing my fingers for a good draw. There you go. <laughs> OK, more seriously, it's nine each here between Ricky Walden and Mark Davis. And Ricky Walden just desperate to get a red in. This, he's been in this position for about ten minutes, just needing one ball. But the longer it goes on, the more it can go wrong, I guess. Yeah. Dominic Dale, was he talking with a little French accent there? 
Jean so and a couple of little bits, weren't there? <laughs> there was, yeah. Com C, Com C. It was like watching a lower low. <laughs> <laughs> Je ne sais pas quoi. <laughs> Zin love, eh? What love does to you, David? Well, it makes you play better, Stuart. I don't well, know about that. Yeah, it seems. Well, listen, well, well played, Dom. And yeah, uh, great to see him there. What a character. Be interesting to see who he draws. Robbie Williams got over the line. Chris Wakeham was playing on for snookers, but it was never. It seemed unlikely. He needed about six. Well, this is going to be drawn out because a bit of cat and mouse here. Oh, this cue ball going very close. But OK, he's left the red. Thing about it is, doesn't mind leaving the red like that. How is he going to get on the colour? He's going to have to dig into the cue ball. Dig down. There you see, digging down. And this is very, even though the red is so close to this pocket, this is missable. Watch the cue ball. Ooh, good shot. This. If he gets on a colour here. Ah, oh, well, that is so unlucky. Well, he needs something in. Yeah. Otherwise, he needs a snooker himself. But that was such a difficult shot, Dave. He had to not only pot the red, avoid the in off in the middle where his hand was. Trying to get on blue or pink. Looking at the score now. He needs... He's 52 behind. He needs this green in. The green is the only colour he can take on. Yeah, it's a massive shot, this. Got to get it just to cling on. Yeah, he needs the points. Got to yeah, get it. Yeah, he's got it. And well he played. Has. Great shot. Well, he's kept himself in it. This frame has got a little way to run, you suspect. Robbie Williams is our latest winner. And for the fourth time, he's qualified, and each time he's won in a decider in the final qualifying round. Incredible. So, congratulations to him. It was a real battle with Chris Wakelin today, but Robbie Williams played a very good decider, and he is heading back to the Crucible for the first time since 2016. And he's with Rob. Well, Robbie, I don't know what's in the water tonight. It's incredible. Dominic Dale's back for the first time in a decade. You're back for the first time in eight years. And what a way to do it against one of this season's great performers, Chris Wakelin, who made the Northern Ireland Open final. That's a fantastic victory tonight. Yeah, and Chris is a great player. He's probably one of the most improved players the last couple of years. Um, yeah, just delighted to get over the line. Just pure relief, really. Uh, and you did so well for, from 9-8 down. It, you know, Chris takes that frame and all of a sudden you think, right, you've had your moment in the sun and he turns the screw, but fair play to take those last two frames in the manner in which you did. Brilliant composure. Yeah, well, I felt a bit hard done by really from 8-all. Uh, made a good break and then I've gone into the pack and somehow landed on nothing. Um, but fair play to Chris. He's made a fantastic clearance from there. And I just thought, I'm just going to attack now. I just, you know, two frames to go, dig in. And uh, thankfully, it, you know, paid off. Since we last saw you at the Crucible, was there ever a time where you began to think, hang on a minute, I, I, I've been there three times, I, I, I might never make it a fourth? Yeah, it's always possible, you know, nothing's guaranteed in this game. Um, as you say, eight years since I've been there, you know, you, you do start to worry a little bit, but um, I've always, I always back myself. Um, you know, I fancy the job today, even though Chris is, you know, what is he, 21 in the world, something like that, 2021? 20, I think. 20. Um, so he was he was the big favourite, but you've got to back yourself in that situation, you know. So I'm just glad to get through. And as Dave was alluding to there a couple of times, you've come through Judgment Day in ten nine thrillers. That 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 takes that's no shortage of backbone, and it isn't a coincidence that you've done it more than once. Yeah, yeah. And a respotted black was one of them as well, my first time. So against Fergal. Against Fergal, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed the sides actually, e even if I lose. You say fair play to the other guy because probably means he's made a good clearance. But um, yeah, I, I really enjoy them. And speaking of enjoying it, presumably because you have waited eight years, whoever comes out the draw and, uh, and whoever you're lined up against, when you walk down those stairs, you'll you'll uh, you'll stand tall, and there'll be uh, you know the hairs on the back of the neck will stand to attention. It's it's a great moment, and uh, you'll make the most of it. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, the last three times I've been there didn't really do myself justice, so there's a bit of there's a bit of, come on, you know, it's time to show what you're made of on the on the big stage. But, um, yeah, whatever happens, it doesn't matter. You know, it's, it's just an achievement to get there, I think. 
It really is. Many, many congratulations. A fantastic victory. Cheers, I look forward me. to welcoming <laughs> you out at the Crucible. Yeah, can't Whatever wait. that may be. <laughs> Cheers, Rob. Thanks. Well, Ricky Walden is 50 in front now, 43 on. So this red, and surely it's over. There it is. It's been a real battle between these two. It's disappointment again for Mark Davis. Of course, he lost in more heartbreaking fashion last year, but still 10-9. Ricky Walden had a 10-9 win last year, and he will be relieved now to be our final man through. It's been a thrilling day here. We've managed to get in a couple of deciders at the end, but... Uh, some real tough qualifiers have made it through on day one. The likes of Lazowski, Bingham, and now Ricky Walden yeah. completes victory by 10 frames to nine over Mark Davis. So for the 10th time, he will be crucible bound. Disappointment for Mark, but didn't really get great chances in the decider. Yeah, what a great match though, wasn't it? From both players. We thought it was always gonna go close. And uh, Ricky Walden had to play catch up all the way through, to be honest, you know? But uh, made the decisive breakthrough in the final frame. Great match. Disappointed. Disappointed for Mac Davis because he played so well. Had a maximum attempt, hadn't he? But uh, yeah, very disappointed for him. But great for Ricky Walden. Yeah, and Ricky, we'll hear from him in due course. But he's another dangerous player in the draw. We've got Lazowski. We've got, of course, Jack Jones, Steve Maguire, Stuart Bingham. Robbie Williams, who we've just heard from, Lou Shan, Dominic Dale back after a decade, and Ricky Walden completing what is a very exciting first day of uh, Judgment Day. Of course, uh, tomorrow, a lot of other big hitters, not least Neil Robertson, coming into the fray. But uh, we're going to hear shortly from Ricky Walden just coming into our studio. And uh, I'm sure, delighted as we just see a few moments from the match. Real thrilling stuff in the end. He did control the decider pretty well with the lead he got, and the ball's going awkward. And uh, as we saw, potted the vital balls, here he is with Rob. Oh, he has survived the battler from Hastings. Ricky, it was you that mounted the big comeback against Mark Davis, 4-1 down. That last one was a little bit sticky, a little bit of adrenaline flowing, but many, many congratulations. Back at the Crucible for a 10th time. Yeah, I can't believe it, to be honest. Um, I've played I've played second best all the way through that game, to be honest. Mark's been so so much better than me in there but I just I stuck in there kept trying ball by ball wasn't playing great but um I just thought if I can get to eight each then I might have a little squeeze but then yeah not sure how I got through to be honest and I can sense the emotion from you and, and that's one of the brilliant things about this this judgment day scenario even though people like you have been there nine times before it still means everything especially to grind it out the hard way against a class act like Mark Davis yeah absolutely Mark's got He's got such a good all-round game, you know, he puts you under pressure and I wasn't doing enough through that game, to be honest, to put him under pressure. I was missing balls and safety wasn't great. Um, but, you know, it's, there's a lot of pressure out there, you know, I was feeling it. And sometimes you've got to admit that it's it's not easy. And when the pressure's on, it's easy to roll over. But I just kept rolling up my sleeves and trying and thankfully it worked. And, and I know what a good mate you are with Stephen Maguire. He's back for a 20th Crucible. Excellent victory for him. In fact, the older guys, or those of you flourishing into mm -hmm. your 40s, are going, well, well, Dominic Dale into his 50s. He's back at the Crucible for the first time in 10 years. Robbie Williams is back for the first time in eight years. Experience has risen to the fore tonight. Yeah, it, it goes that way sometimes. You know, obviously, we've all played these games before. We know how difficult it is. Um, and the younger guys, they, they sort of play on you know, instinct, you know, so it's there's a different kind of balance out there. And yeah, the old guys are um, battling free. Will you savour every single second of walking down those stairs on your first introduction? Yeah, I think so. To be honest, I'm just looking, um, looking to get my game where I want it to be honest. That's the main thing on my mind, you know, it's uh, obviously I don't want to go there and play like I have done for the last two days. So uh, I want to go there and play well. That's the main thing for me. Will you watch the draw on, on Thursday morning? Yeah, I'll keep an eye on it. Obviously, you want to know when you're playing, don't you? So yeah, I'll keep an eye on it, and uh, yeah, I can't believe I'm free to be honest. It's been a it's been a roller coaster day. Well, it's, it's a it's a fantastic story, a great journey. I, I'll never forget. Was it your nieces and nephews getting really excited during the semi final eleven years ago? You've got great memories, and you've achieved brilliant things at the Crucible, and you have the chance to do so again. Many congratulations, Ricky. Cheers, Rob. Thank you. Cheers, he mate. is back. Thank you. Well, as Ricky steps out, thank you very much, Ricky. Ken Doherty will step back in.
And Dave, this has just been absolutely brilliant, hasn't it? It really has, yeah. It's been a thrilling day and uh, a relatively early finish, despite the close matches. Obviously, Jack Lazowski, it's been a while since he beat Matthew Stevens 10-3. Jack Jones 10-4 over Zhou Long. Robbie Williams, we just saw 10-9 over Chris Wakelin. Lu Haishan 10-7 over a very plucky Jensen Kendrick. That's the first page. Second page of results. We saw Steve Maguire defeat Yuan Sijun 10-6. Stuart Bingham, a real thriller with Louis Heathcote, 10-8. Dominic Dale, of course, irrepressible, 10-8 over her, Jude Quang. And Ricky Walden, the last man through today, 10-9 over Mark Davis. A very exciting day of snooker. Absolutely brilliant. And huge thanks to Dave Hendon for holding the fort in the commentary box. I think we're going off for a pint of full fat milk shortly. But <laughs> it won't be a late night because we're going to come back and do it all again tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Ken, fantastic stories. We always expect it on yeah. Judgment Day, especially Judgment Day Part 1, because we can lick our lips in anticipation for tomorrow. But yeah. if you can pick out a couple of highlights, what a... What are the key wins for you from from the season? Well, there were so many, weren't there? I mean, we we were expecting a lot of uh, like close matches, and we certainly delivered. I mean, uh, you know, Lizowski was you know so good beating seeing off Matthew Stevens, but I loved sort of the close match. I mean, Dominic Dale getting back to the Crucible at the ripe old age at what fifty two. Yeah, the spaceman is back. He's landed <laughs> back from the moon to play great snooker. He can hold himself together on a black ball as well. I mean, that's a wonderful story. A little bit this point with Jason Kendrick, you know, because that with Jensen Kendrick, because that was such a a wonderful run that he's had. Like, and it would have been so uh, such a wonderful story had he got to the Crucible and kept his torque. Uh, but you know you see what it means even for the likes of the experienced players Stephen McGuire getting back there Ricky Wall in there you, you could feel the emotion you could hear the, the emotion in his voice you know and how much it means to him to beat Mark Davis feel sorry for Mark Davis great campaigner really put it up and played superbly well just couldn't get over the line but yeah a lot of great stories and a lot of great wins and congratulations to all those eight winners today yeah, they have thoroughly deserved mm. their place in the draw for Thursday And by the morning. way, you can have your glass of milk. I'm going to have something a little bit stronger. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't sure we were allowed to say that, so we'll probably join you. <laughs> yeah. We might be heading to a certain unnamed Irish bar, but I promise you it won't be too late. You go anywhere with this guy, it's never a very early finish, but we'll try and be a little bit abstemious. Uh, thank you very much for your no company, problem. Ken. Guess what? 11 o'clock tomorrow, we're doing it all again. We know the identity of the top 16 in the draw, quarter to nine, live on Five Live. We now know the identity of eight of the 16 qualifiers, 24 in it, eight spots still left up for grabs. Judgment Day Part 1 is complete, which means the clock is already ticking down to the start of Judgment Day Part 2. The drama will continue at the English Institute of Sport. Will it be the old guys? Well, Dominic Dale is flourishing into his 50s. Whoever said you're too old for love. See you tomorrow. <laughs>